All right, we are live. Howdy, everyone. Welcome back to the MMT Macro Trader live stream. I'm back after a, a week away. I've got Bijou on the line, thanks. as always. Bijou, how you doing, my man? Hey, man. Pretty good, thanks. Yeah. Welcome back. Number yeah. one, well, at least one of the best you know, classical <laughs> face-melting tweeters are out there. It's the yeah. MMT Macro Trader, or should I say, maybe correction there. The seventh best neoclassical face melting tweeter in Michigan. Seventh on, best on your, particular, on your particular street. Yeah, yeah. I just had to recalibrate. Can you thinking uh, about all the people on your street who are <laughs> uh, non utility maximizing agents, very highly non rational uh, actors? And I'm the seventh best out of all of them. Oh, man. Man. The neoclassicals more. So, what was that? <laughs> Um, but you're saying I'm the seventh best tweeter yeah. out of all of them. Oh, okay, fair enough. You are the best tweeter. Yeah, the best. Yeah. Did you ever? Did you ever come across? Uh, sorry, just adjusting my mic there. Sorry about that noise. Did you ever come across the um the neoclassical Marxist on Twitter? No. Is this? A, am, I, am I being set up for a joke here, or am I supposed to have no, come? No, no, it's, no. I, 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 I wish I had. I'll tell you no, about no. the jokes yeah. in a bit. No, the neoclassical Marxist, I think it was one of the money on the left guys. They, okay. they never revealed themselves. Oh, right? okay, 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 yeah. I think you told me about it, but it yeah, yeah, yeah. I did I did some very basic, no, no software uh, linguistic analysis. <laughs> <laughs> I figured out who it was, but uh, oh, I long since forgot it. They, didn't, they never come up. They may have gone a bit inactive. Okay. Anymore, but they they had some good banger tweets. It, just a good sort of a bit of humor, like they'd they'd do some economics point, and um, and it was a very clever mix of Marx, as if Marx was a neoclassical. Okay, group. okay, okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. But apart from them, uh, it's good to have you back, and uh, yeah, back in the banger tweet business, and uh, other other neural network work and stuff. Oh, oh man, I've got some good stuff. I actually have questions. That's one of the things I wrote down right before we went live. I have questions for you. Uh, I, I, I need, I need some of your, your insight. Right. Um, so maybe That's we can good. do that live. Uh, I, we won't, we won't start off with that because we have a lot, lot to cover. Uh, yeah. I, I went away for a week and, yeah. uh, well, while I was away, you went and played with someone else, <laughs> which is so cool. I, I haven't, I, oh, you had told me that you were going to go on macro and cheese um, or the, 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 you were talking to Steve, uh, but I, I was unaware that you were actually going to hit record. I, I haven't even had a chance to listen to the live stream at this yeah. point, but, uh, yeah, that is, or right. not, a, not a live stream. I'm sorry. It's a podcast. Um, okay. but that's up there. So t uh, tell me about that experience. I, I haven't listened yet. Uh, Matt, macro and yeah. cheese, uh, real progressive Steve Grumbine. Is that how you pronounce his last name? Yeah, Steve Grumbine. Yeah. 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 How'd that go? Yeah. Uh, it was good. Steve, Steve's been, uh, I don't know, sort of um, low, low key chasing me for a while. Uh, yeah. Because I often comment on their things. Yeah. Often sort of criti critically from a like friendly critique perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he always appreciates it. And um, and then and yeah, and I, I don't know. Well, geez, what was it? So before COVID, before COVID, uh, I was I was thinking, oh, geez, you know, there's nothing much going on here in New Zealand, MMT wise. So I thought I'd help out the US friends. This was before the election, I guess. Yeah, well, of course, it was before, well before COVID, so a few years. But then COVID hit, and oh man, I had such a, it was such a hassle, and so I had to sort of dip out of being a USA sort of activist. And uh, ever since then, the time zones never worked out, and so it was like oh yeah, yeah, forever. Yeah. He, yeah. he even wanted to do this. Um, oh, he does this rogue scholar thing where he just kind of goes off in his rants. Uh, which is pretty good sometimes, but but he wanted to do something more analytical with me, and uh, uh, it's, it's really hard to find time zones, right? Yep. yep. I, I also don't don't have strict New Zealand work hours because I do work partly overseas hours. It's just all a bit crazy. And um, anyway, eventually we got together. He might have he might have had someone else, uh, another guest, sort of bail on him or something, and. Um, Anyway, we had a good chat. He he wanted to talk about the petrodollar, and yeah, um, you know, he yeah. says that U.S. dollar is a global reserve currency and all the misinformation about that. And yeah. so I, I was able to talk a little bit about that, but it's not like 
something I actively research. I just I just have the MMT lens uh, yep. on on yep. it. Yeah. And so when you when you when you get ch if I got ch challenged by someone like uh, you know Michael Hudson or someone, I probably I'd probably just you know shrivel away and die because <laughs> they they know so much more about uh, geopolitics and so yeah forth. yeah yeah yeah. But there is a there is a good MMT lens on all that, and and it it helps countries who are suffering from imperialism to at least understand what they can do, what their policy yep. space is. Yep. Yep. And then it's like, well, what remains is is the US, you know, just trying to force everyone to use the use the dollar. And once you realize you don't have to use the dollar, you've got other other maybe issues like uh, you know, your exporter your, your export lobby, uh, USA being a huge net importer, everyone sort of wanting to sell to the USA for the for these reasons. But, you know, it's not always U.S. dollar hegemony. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a lot of effects, including the fact that the USA is still a very good, strong export. You know, it's still a strong producer. <laughs> Everyone, yeah, people yeah, yeah. want this stuff, especially Hollywood products and what have you. Yes, uh, and all sorts. Yeah, all sorts of services that the USA is producing, especially online. Yeah, services. yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Strong demand for US dollar, and uh, yeah, you know, I mean, of course, pe people want those dollars so they can subscribe yeah. to the uh, MMT Macro Trader Patreon. Um, well, it's not so much they want the dollars, uh, I just pay in New Zealand, yeah, 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 you're right, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But they want they want the services and, and that eventually through forex desks, uh, yes, the, the demand, an effect yep. demand in the dealer banks for the yep. US dollars, and so US dollars stay strong, and uh, you know, wouldn't matter, it wouldn't matter for all of that sort of slowly went away not not catastrophically but it wouldn't wouldn't undermine real standards of living probably correct uh, yeah correct so you correct. Know, it can all be adjusted to be more equitable across the whole world i, I reckon so it's just uh usa is getting a really good deal yeah you know, able to import stuff relatively cheaply yep. and uh, yeah it's just, you know you should ride that wave while you can instead yeah. of tariff man uh oh, I, you know. Know. I know it's it's so it's <laughs> so ridiculous I, I yeah yeah it's you get a female prison be tariff woman yeah it's it's quite terrible really when you think about the i mean as an american who's done well for himself and and has definitely um kind of gotten the better in the deal but yet to also see so many people in this country get absolutely nothing for the situation that was built for us right i, I mean it's it's yeah. such a it's such a regressive uh uh, distribution of of the benefit yeah. uh, of other I countries agree. for whatever reason wanting to to um, issue debt in the U.S. dollar. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, after period, that mineral rich countries really really get a bad deal, and uh, yeah, you know, a lot of it's a self own. I mean, they just they have the corruption. They shoot yep. themselves in the foot. Yeah, uh, you know, really good rich food producing companies uh, countries often have the most insane food prices because of the uh, corruption. You know, people wanting to uh, exporters having a basic uh, grip on their on their leaderships and so forth. Yeah, oh, let me ch let me quickly respond to the chat before you go on. Douglas. Well, hold on, hold on. Let, let me just say hi, everyone, uh, real, real quick. Yeah, let, me, let me just get in here. Thomas, hey. Tr, Josh, uh, Michael, uh, Hey Zeus, Hamel, everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome. If uh, if you if you also hide in the shadows as well, say hi in the chat just real quick. Let us know you're there. Um, be good to know. And I'll give you a shout out. But uh, anyway, Bijou, go ahead and hit up some of the chat messages yeah, that are no. coming in. Yeah, no, just a quick few. Uh, thanks for everyone who enjoyed the episode. Uh, uh, Michael Cruz, yeah, if you're friendly, if you critique Steve Brumbry, you have to also, you know, give him a boost at the same time. Uh, and, and it's got to come from a good place because uh, he, he gets a bit angry sometimes for you know, understandable reasons. Uh, yeah, Hamel, uh, yeah, I'm a fast bowler. <laughs> I used to bowl pretty darn fast, actually, but uh, these days I'm uh, sort of retired from cricket. It was fun though; it's a good game. Um, yeah, Josh, uh, yeah, critiquing a left is uh, something. Yeah, ah, has to be done if if you if you if you're a person who considers yourself on the left, <laughs> you got to critique them, especially for their lack of unity, which is what they're supposed to be uh, all about: solidarity and. Uh, you sometimes see more solidarity amongst the banker class. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Um, uh, 
anyway, hey, yeah, no, that, that's all for intros, I think. I think that's all. Yeah, other things will come up in the chat as we move along. Um, I will. Let me do this real quick. I, I know everyone who's watching will likely know exactly where to find it, but uh, here it is, realprogressives.org slash macro dash n dash cheese dash podcast. Yeah. Um, and there, there you are. Library. There you are. Oh, yeah. Looking good. It's a Looking great library. Resources. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I've, I've tried to listen to Macro and Cheese a few times. There are a few guests that I will listen to. Um, Steve is definitely a real progressive. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I, I'm able to engage in MMT stuff when it's coming more from either like a, a, a theoretical construction of the macro economy or from a finance angle. It's hard for yeah. me to engage in MMT stuff when it's more activist side right. it just doesn't I, I don't know it doesn't resonate that's that's not to say i don't have a heart for activism but it is to say that when i'm listening mm -hmm. to podcast stuff i just uh there's just yeah it's hard for me to to to, to continue to listen <laughs> yeah anyway. uh, i can i can maybe understand that yeah that i mean activism is a hard thing you're always lift trying to lift uh political issues up and uh mt issues have get just drowned out in the politic political yeah to speak. Okay. yeah yeah, which I always think is part of the. Actually, one of the one of the clips you wanted me to watch uh, in the notes you sent prior, I did. It was the interview that Warren Mosler did. Um, it was a uh, yeah. Here, here it is on my screen. A twelve minute interview that Warren Mosler did with. Um, I'm sorry, it's a clip. It's a twelve minute long clip. I believe the interview was an hour long on on Real Vision. That's right. And yeah, uh, I, I mean. I, I, what, what Warren said there, I, I mean, I, I can tell he's probably repeated this exact same line over and over again, uh, but she was very, the, the, the interviewer uh, said some of the extent of um, why, uh, you know, a, a after the, after the, M or after the government did MMT policy and then Warren, you know, very quickly, <laughs> very quickly, like, no, 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 MMT yeah. is a framework. <laughs> it's a framework yeah, for right, understanding. Yeah. And, uh, and I could tell how kind of, I mean, from that point forward for, for a brief moment, I could kind of tell that she got a little frustrated by him kind of being like, I'm not going to let you do that. Uh, but, yeah. but it is, it, it, and I, that's what's the most frustrating thing. And I get this even on, you know, and engagements I have on Twitter for, from kind of the anti MMT crowd is, um, I, I'm not some like, AOC flag waving person. I just mm -hmm. I, what what I want to 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 start with is the framework for understanding the macro economy and MMT explains it exactly. as it is today. And then how can we operate within that framework? And then yeah. realize, as we're seeing right now, that when we do a high interest rate policy, right, that's not going to necessarily yeah. derail uh, 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 credit expansion uh, or you know create unemployment. We'll go over all this in a little while and take a little bit of a of a victory lap uh, again for another week, but that uh, understanding the framework for analysis is going to tell you that all you're doing is just increasing the interest payment to the wealthiest among us. And as it turns out, that supports employment and uh, yeah. doesn't really seem to affect inflation that much. Um, yeah. So, uh, and yet, it, you know, it, we're all in agreement that it's regressive. So whatever inflationary effects might be yeah. there uh, is, you know, punishing the, 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 the least wealthy among us. But that it, yeah. at least we understand that it's a policy decision and that's what we're doing mm -hmm. first and foremost. And, and, uh, and, and so... He made that point when I when I kind of hear the the the, the mm -hmm. MMT activist type that very quickly skirt across the 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 framework for analysis that that gets kind of frustrating to me. Oh yeah, um, yeah, so, I don't understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of <clears throat> although yeah, I, I always come up against this in uh, like forums on um, Bill Mitchell's blog, Steve Keen, others. Um, Sounds like I'm really out there with all these forums. I, I only have one or two that I'm just, <laughs> but but you get a lot of people. Uh, maybe this is the word complaining. I, I don't want to say they complain, but sort of complaining that oh, MMT is a left project. I think you get a lot of critics from the conservative right claiming MMT yep, is a left yep, project. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Like Bill Mitchell, who's the most left or socialist sort of MMT around, almost he just. Every other every other blog he writes is MMT is not, you know, it doesn't have an ideology. It's a framework for understanding. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah, 
I don't want to go on and rant about that. The real vision finance was, wasn't too bad. It wasn't. It wasn't. Every, every, every interviewer who's not coming from a really well-informed perspective who hasn't done all the research and absorbed MMT is, is going to be a bit lame and, and going to yep. sort of frame it all a bit wrong. But Warren's one of the best at instantly correcting them kind yeah. of all the time and not, not letting it slide. So he's a, he's one of the great defenders of the uh, school of MMT thought. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I, I mentioned the the thing because the video there, because oh, actually later on, I found out that, you know, real vision finance have a lot of crazy stuff too. It's like, oh, the, yeah. the other, the other catalog of stuff is just completely off the rails. It's just completely, you know, new Keynesian neoclassical yeah. Uh, yeah. framework for analysis. Yeah. So, so it was a good interviewer because she was at least sympathetic to, yeah. to Warren and seemed to understand a little bit and, uh, let Warren. I mean, so it's it's on the record now, at least there, where and wherever else Warren does it on Twitter, um, that that he's you know just pointed out the, the huge danger of the of the debt ceiling and and quote you know the phrase he uses is a rapid rapid spiral downwards, and even if it doesn't happen, even if we get past the debt ceiling with whatever tools they have to use, uh, even yeah, if it comes to yeah. a platinum coin, yeah, it's really good to put that analysis out there. Uh, it's like you know. It could become a counterfactual, you know. There is no debt ceiling spiral downwards, but it's just really cool because he 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 puts himself out there saying, you know, it could he could happen you know, like in in a week. I don't want to miss put words in his mouth, but I think you know he's used. I think he's used that time frame. <laughs> like it rapidly spiral downwards in a week. Yeah, yeah. He's, I think, he's I talking think about he said, a theoretical. Yeah. yeah. You know, worst case. Yeah. Worst case where payments just stop and and everything just sort of. It stops, and and I'm like, uh, okay. There's another. There's two things here that I want to try and remember to 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 talk about. I try and do it quick. The first one is that um, I'm starting to think I want this to happen. Oh, th- great! Thanks, man. <laughs> I really want this to happen to you guys. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Firstly, I'm not over there. Yeah. yeah Secondly, yeah. Uh, it's it's like accelerationism on on super steroids. Like if it. If he's right, it does happen in a week, say, it's, it's a, just a huge, massive shock. It's not going to, like, be people dying uh, and instantly becoming homeless. It's like, it's just like the shock of it will uh, be so, so sudden, I think, that it will for, almost forever cure everyone there of the debt ceiling disease. I was just speculating. I mean, I, 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 obviously, I, I think I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get what you're saying. It's a hypothetical on a hypothetical. Supposing uh, it does happen. Supposing it does happen the way Warren kind of thinks it could happen if it's all really crazy, really, really, really hard debt ceiling. Yeah, they just stop payments. They just can't figure out a way to do it. Like they can't even write IOUs on paper. Um, then. And then hypothetically, on top of all those hypotheticals, it's just like I'm I'm speculating that it's like it's like just a very impulse function, <laughs> direct delta function accelerationism in a week, and uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm just I'm just amu- I'm just amu- amusing myself at the it, thought of, of, of the thought of that being the way everyone sort of suddenly understands. <laughs> it would be it would be quite bonkers to see it play out because I, I, the numbers off the top of my head I, I, I can't. I can't uh, think of to, to repeat, but I have looked at, you know, I've done accumulation of tax receipts that come in, right? So, I mean, I've, I've calculated one of the things I did for one of the models I built was, was the historical accumulation of all the tax receipts, you, you know, and the, the numbers in, in like the quad close, to like the quadrillions of dollars that we've received uh, that, that have been brought back in. Right. Be, because I mean, if you think about it, it's, yeah. a, it's a big system turning over and over again. Right. So, I mean, the, the spending right. is always, <laughs> yeah, 80 percent of the spending is always coming back in as tax receipts. And so if you just shut off the one spigot, but you still have you, know, you still have the pump at the bottom of the <laughs> system yeah. s- sucking, sucking out, you, you know, it, and it is yeah. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen tremendously fast. Right, yeah. um, I, like like this, the system stays uh, 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 you know, stays afloat be, be, because of the spending, um, and and I, I I think he's right. I mean, I think within a month or two, the 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 uh, yeah. thir- you know the thirty trillion dollars swimming pool is is half empty at, yeah. at that point. And but the other it, thing, it, it just ruins all other schools of thought too. Because imagine any real real sort of narrow uh, 
post-Keynesian who hasn't absorbed MMT is, oh, the monetary circuit, yeah, just, just, yeah, that circuit will just kick in. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, Private I mean, that, yeah, that's it, circuit. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All, all of a sudden. Yeah. I, I've always thought about this too. And I, I mean, actually I, back, back when I was an Austrian, I thought uh, during the last debt ceiling fight that actually, if, if the, we finally hit the debt ceiling, that should, that should begin the biggest boom in, in uh, you know, American history of, of economic prosperity because the yeah. government wasn't going to be uh, uh, diverting resources that would have been better allocated yeah. by, by the free market, oh, yeah. right? It, it, you know, so this allocation was suddenly dramatically improved. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, so if if the debt ceiling hits, it should actually be the the, the greatest part, of, you know, point of prosperity greatest. ever. We're finally get the government out of the way. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, but then, but then, even too, y- y- yeah, the, the the monetarists who think that the government really just funds itself, essentially, you know, as an offshoot of uh, the credit expansion of of the private sector, right? I mean, they're they're going to find out real quick that actually the capital base yeah. is the private sector saving, right? I mean, that, yeah, that is yeah. uh, um, that is that is necessary for uh, uh, to to create the capital. Uh, yeah. the capital layer for the banks to continue uh, to be able to lend. So um, yeah. I, I have, I have been telling the, the Patreon subscribers who are the active investors. And this is part of my discussion last night uh, to be checking out, you know, every day I Google debt ceiling every day I'm on, uh, Oh God, I'm uh, Stein. I think is his last name. Uh, Twitter. Mm. God, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, is there a thought? No. Uh, oh man. Jeff Stein, Jeff Stein of the Washington Post. Oh, he's he's got a good uh, he's got a good beat on. I have a lot of finance stuff happening in Washington. Um, you, you know, I'm 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 ready to hit sell. I, I've been I have been bullish since the end of last year, and uh, it's obviously played out nicely. But uh, I'm this is finally the thing that uh, that I'm willing to get out of the way yeah. of because what, what's going to happen is. You're going to see this first happen in 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 the hedging space, right? So, kind of part part of my update last night was: look, we have CPI that came out today. A lot of hedging activity has been taking place around kind of major inflation sensitive uh, macro data coming out, right? Um, and so we, we we've seen this kind of hedging structure that's that's taken up to up until the cpi but from this point forward i mean and the market as a whole is going to be laser focused on the debt ceiling and even if you're not convinced of kind of what, what an mmt or would say is is going to be kind of the outcome of of a, a debt ceiling crisis uh you still know that on the short run that the issuance of uh, shorter term bills and, and that sort of thing is is necessary for the plumbing of the banking sector, right? Uh, so yeah. e- even if you don't exactly know how the mechanism is going to you know, cause collapse, you're still going to be afraid enough to where you will want to start to take out hedge positions for calamity. And when you buy hedging positions, which are, are uh, puts, that actually creates a self fulfilling prophecy because the dealer that you're taking those puts out, you, you're, you're that's you know creating the, the other side of that contract. They actually have to sell right at that moment mm-hmm. the underlying uh, the underlying instrument, which would be the S and P. So when you start to hedge, uh, when you start to hedge, you actually start to create selling pressure by hedging. So even the potential mm-hmm. for crisis can actually create crisis. Sure. Um, and yeah. that is so that, that's going to be the first wave right if it looks like a crisis is you know almost inevitable that'll be the first 10% drop in the S&P just right there and then once shit actually hits the fan then the other 50% happens right um right. once we actually get the downward spiral to occur cuz not only then are you going to have a drop in in really economic output right you're also yeah. uh, having even more hedging taking place, right? Even more fear selling taking place. Mm-hmm. But in this instance, there's no bid coming in because the bid always comes in from the automatic stabilizers hitting, right? Mm-hmm. That's where the bid's going to come in, but that's not going to be there. So, uh, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, it's, yeah. I, I, I certainly don't want to see it happen. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> but, no, I do. I do now. I'm not the dog in the room with the room on fire. I'm the dog in the room in the other country. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But, but, um, yeah, you're right about all that. But also, like, you could imagine, ah, oh, yeah. But if they just uh, stop, you know, shut down the tax department as well, you know. So if the, if the whole government sort of just shuts down, you don't, 
you don't get any payments coming in either. So that's why why I said it's going to be it it'd be interesting, you know, hypothetically if this all sort of played out uh, with payments out of government stopping, but also you could. I mean, this is probably not going to happen. I, I don't think it would happen, but payments to the government stop as well. Oh, then okay, okay, I get, I get what you're saying. Okay, okay, so... Yeah. so I don't, I don't think that's the way it happened, though, but but if it did, right, then you've got an endogenous money circuit, but then you start, you'll start to very rapidly realise all these, all these other effects that you're talking about and that the whole financial fire sector is a massive... 30% sort of level type of drain, parasitic drain on the economy. Yeah, the, the yeah. Bag, the, the other bag over the runner's head, apart from the government. Yeah. So um, you try to run, it, run circuits in that, that situation, and again, it'll just still rapidly spiral downwards. I, I do have to admit it, it's getting pretty dicey, right? So uh, again, this is so your uh, finger. Your finger is on the sell button, but it's like yeah, it's, it's so. got to be. It's got to be getting a bit so aching, aching from the you know hovering over there. Yeah, it's like how long do you have to hover? This is this was kind of this was kind of difficult too about this situation is um, that Josh, I'm senior. Explain what on Twitter, um, or are you not talking to me? Um, yeah, maybe they're talking to Michael to, in the chat. Yeah. So th this, this is the tricky part is, I mean, we are just seeing massive fiscal expansion. I, 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 I can't even tell you how much higher we are relative to kind of what baseline should be hmm. because of the additional spending coming from the uh, coming from the interest payment. I, I, it's just it's just wild, and, and I think we are vastly underpriced as well. Actually, one of one of the one of the models and, and BJ, I'm, that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. One of the models I'm I'm working on. I, I finally decided to. Uh, I really want to start making deep learning models that are not perfect, but are just tools that would be helpful to have. Um, and this would be one of them because one of the one of the thoughts I was having is I'm like okay. And people ask me this from time to time, but like, what what is the fair value of the S and P right now? Right, like, it, it, in yeah. other words, if I were to come up with some sort of algorithm to determine based on what well, I kind of just call the core MMT inputs, right, fiscal spending, wherever the wherever the total you know kind of credit base is in the U S. Right, let's, let's call it those two. You know, what what is the average price of the S and P relative to where both those channels are at at any given time? Right. Um, yeah. My my gut tells me we're like 10, 20 percent under price from where it should be given where spending oh, is. Oh, really? Um, oh. And and so this is what's difficult about the here and now is I think if <laughs> if we can get rid of get past this debt ceiling crisis thing, I, I mean I I think we have a, a at least a five to ten percent bounce that should happen very quickly uh a, a very strong rally very quickly if, if you're watching s p 4200 has been an absolute yeah. ceiling uh over the last i mean really it's been a, a kind of a pinned zone that we're right around 41 to 4200 for over a year now we've been at the same level um bouncing obviously bouncing around quite a lot but uh i, I mean i think we have the potential to uh, to explode higher here um and so I, mm -hmm. it, it does feel like we are very underpriced. Yeah, Daniel, a lot, a lot of countries are doing uh, really good uh, right now. Um, and I think it's kind of only yeah. a, matter, a matter of time before the S&P catches up. But <laughs> the debt ceiling is, is, is going to be the great equalizer one way or another if that ends yeah, up yeah. Uh, playing out. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. Like, I'm ready to sell. But I, it, it, one of the things, too, just talk, uh, just talk trading for, for another second here. One of the yeah. things that's very difficult is getting on the train once it's left the station. And what I mean by that is um, yeah. sometimes you want to you want to get cute and you want to look smart by dodging a 5% pullback, right? right. But it, it, markets can move so fast that you might think, oh, this might be a 10% yeah. pullback, right? So I'm going to wait. And then it makes up that 5% and then another percent and another percent. Of course, the last thing you want to do is get into the market when it's pushing into new highs, right? <laughs> like right. you want to buy yeah, low, yeah. sell high, not the other way around. So yeah. sometimes it can be very difficult um, to try and get overly cute with timing the market because just once the train gets going, it, yeah, it yeah. might be you know there's never a good time to get back on uh, once it gets going. And and I know that's that's I mean that's just something I've I've learned the hard way. Uh, is yeah. oh you have to explain that to me uh, if it's going up like. You know, 
uh, it's never a good time to get back on. It's is, it, isn't that just psychological? Well, you just get back on. Well, yeah, yeah but okay. Uh, here's here's kind of how it works out. Um, let, me, let me just pull up. Let me just pull up a. Chart. While you're doing that, I just want, I just want to, before yeah. I forget one other thing is yeah, that uh, Warren. I'm I'm just switching topics real real quick. Yeah, yeah. we as as Warren um, has been on his most recent shows. He also did a good couple of episodes on applied MMT podcast. People oh yeah yeah yeah. Out. Let's let's go let's go to let's hit up some other podcasts as well. Yeah, applied MMT podcast. Yeah. Um, it's good stuff. Yeah, but you'll notice you'll notice that he's. Um, He's usually getting asked about interest rates, and usually these days he's talking about the um, interest income channel. And you know he's often complaining about other top top level MMT is sort of not emphasizing the interest income channel enough. Mm-hmm. And uh, he and he gets a lot of pushback that it that that he's he's saying it's a it's a boom for the economy. <laughs> But he always qualifies it with it's regressive as hell. Yeah, yeah. Most, I mean, he's his most regressive way to do it. Yeah. But what's interesting is that the other thing he he hasn't been talking about in these interviews, perhaps because he doesn't get prompted, is what I reckon is is more dominant. I mean, and I'll, I'm interested in what your opinion on this. I think the term structure, the prices. I think the Ford price is more dominant um, at, at this stage because I, I think you know. There is interest income. It's massive, um, and and the thing is, it's getting it out of the pockets of the yeah. you know, bondholders yeah. into yeah. the real economy. Yeah. And so, you know, when when pensioners spend, when 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 anyone gets an interest payment, they've got more more income to spend. But with inflation high, you know, maybe maybe the propensity to spend doesn't doesn't shoot up dramatically. Um, but all of this stuff, I don't know because I'm I'm not in the upper class. So I don't know how people <laughs> behave. Really, I'm just, I'm just going by, going by, you know, uh, anecdotes and, and so forth. And um, I, I haven't done a massive analysis of the different sort of uh, class sectors at all. I mean, I don't know who whoever who who does that. Um, but there are studies, I guess, you can get on propensities to spend and save. And that, and that so sort of I, I, I actually, but I think the term structure prices. I think it, it's that's dominant. I actually do have some insight on this, and I, yeah. I, I got some inside knowledge. I can't – I don't know if I'm allowed to fully divulge this. Oh. And again, this is going to be just – obviously for me, this is going to be totally anecdotal. But um, I, I do have a friend of mine who was letting me know he's uh, he's a hiring manager – not a hiring manager. He, he does hiring. He's, he's, a, he's a VP uh, of, a, of a company, and, and they have a regional group that uh, that they – give their data to for hiring and, and kind of what, what is being seen from hiring. Um, and other companies give the hiring data as well. And he is saying, he told me that um, in terms of salaries being required for hiring, that it's at a record pace for, yeah. uh, for what's being requested uh, during uh, during uh-huh. the interview process, so this is you know this is a private company that is not not his company, but the company that is doing these surveys. Right, they're seeing across the board in his specific industry uh, that the, the salary requests are just through the roof right now, and, and yeah. they continue to accelerate. So y- that's a y- point. If you drive inflation this way, yeah, like if the COVID supply shock inflation is easing off, and it and it and it is, you can see that in some in some of the data. Yeah, but you're still keeping prices high through um, interest rate effects, then the money does get back into the economy uh, through the, through the interest in, income channel, but indirectly because you're just keeping inflation high. You're, you're, you're keeping costs, forward, forward costs high. People have to um, uh, spend to support that. And uh, that's, yep. that's the way yep. money gets yep. back into the economy. It circulates. Yep. And inflation, yep. inflation from that type of, you know, more demand side or cost exactly, push. exactly that that that, yeah. that circulates currency. Yeah, I, <laughs> I I only I only made that big uh, qualifier just to say that I wish I could tell you exactly you know how you guys uh, could look this up for yourself, but I I don't know if I'm allowed to divulge it or not. But suffice to say, I, I know it's being seen out there, um, and that's always been that's always been my my gut feeling on this is that eventually you're just going to get the demand for higher wages. And yeah. who's going to supply that demand for the higher wage? 
It's it, or you, what, I'm sorry. What is going to supply? Right. It's going to be the additional income from yeah. the uh, higher interest payments. I mean, that, that's right. Payments. I mean, I, I don't know if the, the. I don't if know the fiscal side doesn't. Yeah. Go, go, yeah. Go up. Yeah. Or the tax. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know every every way in which you know you know every step of how it's going to get transmitted, but um, right. look if if. Yeah. If I decide I want, work. yeah, I, I mean, if I decide that I'm going to put the effort in to get a new job, to, 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 you know, buy a bigger house, right. You know, I mean, all the, all the desires that we have as, as humans to get more in life, right. If I'm going to do that, um, and my, you know, the house that would have cost me 250,000 three years ago now cost me 350,000. Now I'm going to ask for a higher income. Right. And I mean, we're, we're going to do this in concert. Uh, everyone's going to do that. And then that's, I, I mean, either one, that income, uh, the, the additional money isn't there to support that demand. And you, you know, then, then you might see some, uh, then you might see some turbulence in the economy, but it was, yeah. it is there. I mean, it is there. It's there. Uh, it's it, like, like I said, it's, it's very regressive way to do it. <laughs> Plus it's a messy, awful way to do it. Um, because the trickle down is it's like it's like hard to grab get get money out of uh, savers pockets. <laughs> yeah, and, and but eventually, I think you're right. It does it it does happen eventually. The, and uh, the good news yeah. is the good news is is that there still is competition, right? And and this has always been this has always just kind of been uh, again just one of these things that that yeah uh, that you know the critique would be yeah that that. Uh, wealthy people are just going to save and they're, they're not going to have a propensity to spend, but they still need to win. And if they're not yeah, willing yeah. to win, there's someone else who's willing to win. Right. That's like, right. like there's someone else who's willing to take the risk. Um, yeah. and, and it's always been, it's always been a struggle of mine when people are like, well, high, high interest rates are going to dissuade people from taking out loans, yada, yada, yada. Um, I, I mean, at the end of the day, you might think it's too big of a risk or, or might find it uh, unappealing, but if someone wants something <laughs> that you have yeah. or that you were going yeah. after and they're willing to take the risk. Yeah. Now, if that money stops being there, then yeah, you're going to get a crisis to emerge. Um, yeah, that's right. Okay, well, that's the other crisis, you know, is the Fed lowers rates too rapidly. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. So this is going to be interesting, man. This is, yeah. <laughs> okay. Confirmation uh, we, we, bias. Oh, my God. Hold on a second. I, I got I, I to gotta write all this down. Oh, I down. just got to reduce noise. No, uh, no. Yeah, sorry. I kind of laughed loud there. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let, let's, let's do this real quick. We had a ton of sweet podcasts this week on uh, the last two weeks while I, while I was gone. Uh, to Disney World, we had a great trip. By the way, it was really, really good. Kids, oh, cool. kids did it. Kids did a great oh, job. Great. Flights were great. I was going to say. I was going to say in the intro. In the intro, I forgot. It's like, welcome back, Douglas. Yeah, have you recovered from the vacation yet? Yo, it's it is nuts. Okay, so I, I left. I, I'm I'm six. I'm I'm just just a tad over six foot one. So at my at my at my absolute peak, I was six two. But I weigh. I weigh 201 pounds heading down uh, to our, our Walt Disney World vacation. I came back. What do you think I came back at? <laughs> do, do you want to guess it? I, I went down at 201 pounds. I don't know what that is in kilograms or whatever. Kilograms. <laughs> kilograms. <laughs> Some quaint, quaint what you, cake. What, this, this, is how, this is how difficult these, uh, this is how much happens on these vacations. How little leisure we actually get. I came back at 196. I lost five pounds. In yeah. in one week on vacation, running around. That's because uh, you're a dad effect. It's the yeah, dad effect. It is. That's why I say, yeah. Oh, and you're recovered yet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, so it is is a hell of a time. But uh, anyone else is going to put on weight, man. Yeah, yeah. The kids yeah. the kids had a blast. The kids had a blast. They did a great. great they did a great job this year. Uh, the Walt Disney Company has more money of mine now than I, <laughs> than I care to even think of. But. Uh, um, and then we all caught. Then we all caught the the uh, one kilo equals two point two pounds. Okay, so I lost yeah. uh, just just over two kilos. Okay, um, jeez, sweating it out there. You were at the California Disney one, were you? No, uh, Florida. Uh, oh, Florida. Florida. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty sweaty down there. Yeah, yeah it was. The weather was good. The liquid's up. The weather was good. Yeah, oh, we do. do. We do. We do. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, dude. I yeah. Uh, I'll save the Disney talk maybe for the third hour, but I'm I'm a huge Walt Disney World fan. Right, I'm going, I've uh, been going as a since I was a kid. Every every year, we we uh, our our religion uh, was to you know circle circle the castle <laughs> and our yearly p- pilgrimage down to down to the the House of Mouse. But uh, 
But anyway, um, it, was, it was a good time. Let's see. A couple of the things I wanted to hit on, though. MMT, Applied MMT Podcast. It's up on the screen right now. Check that out. I am so happy that Warren Mosler's come on my show or the, our show, Warren. I'm so happy that he has been on Applied MMT Podcast now because it is very rare to get a discussion with Warren Mosler uh, that's longer than an hour that gets past the basic yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the basic exactly. stuff, right? Um yeah. It was a great podcast. I'm so glad. Uh, c- congrats, Applied MMT, on just getting a, a great interview done as well. So if you haven't checked that out, check that out. I already mentioned Macro and Cheese. Uh, check that out. We also had uh, some other uh, really good discussions. Nathan Tankus has had two interviews out this week as well. Um, well worth listening to. I don't have the links up for those, but uh, well, one of them was Blockworks. I don't think I've watched this one or listened to this one yet, but he had another one out. That's out there. Uh, yeah. We have some, it's just, it, it, yeah, it, you know, 2020 was an awesome opportunity for MMT to, 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 to get out there. Uh, obviously a lot of the blame for inflation was put on quote unquote MMT, although there's, you know, (laughs) MMT didn't do anything. Um, but you know, it it is another opportunity seeing the data, the way that it is, is another opportunity, uh, to kind of strike while, while the iron's hot, if you will, because MMT is, is, is getting another, uh, another opportunity to really show that, that it really understands the, the proper framework for analysis as we see the interest rates and, and everything that continues to play out, uh, play out with regard to, uh, with regard to the macro economy. So I wanted to tie up that part and then move on to the rate discussion okay. and then move on to the rate discussion and some of the, uh, um, yeah, some of the data that we're seeing. So okay, I don't know if I derailed you from That's another, good. another, point that you were going to make but no, that's uh, good i i actually haven't caught up with uh, nathan's recent stuff okay but i did have some strength i did i did i do have some issues with the whole idea of the fed uh issuing its own um uh, securities um, oh yeah is, yeah you, you know, brought that up yeah. things so yeah. it, it books the debt just the fed takes it on its balance sheet not the treasury and so you don't call it the national debt anymore and i was i was wondering okay you know yeah that's that it seems fine and all that, but um, they still seem predicated on the whole idea that they have to issue the debt under mm-hmm. the. I guess it's under the rules, right? It's the rules that rules of the game that. Um, Correct. You know, they have to have treasury has to have a positive amount in it in its Fed account in order to be able to actually send the payments out. I, I don't know if it's a software it's a software thing that'll just block the payments or not, but uh, someone's finger that isn't allowed to push the button on the payments. If the, if the count's not in, in positive balance. But anyway, I, I, I just had some residual little minor niggles about that. But, but I think Nathan's like talking in the framework of not just the MMT, but the framework of a little bit of the, you know, current institutional analysis, you know, how do you smooth things out without changing too much of the, yep. um, too much of the in, in, infrastructure? Infrastructure, and, and yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. There's so much concrete that's dried, it's hard yeah, to yeah, rip up some of it. Concrete. Uh, Good Michael, it, yeah. or was it uh, Josh? Yeah, I'll probably I'll probably reach out to Warren in a few more months and see if he wants to come on again. See if he has anything new uh, to. I mean, obviously he's got you know things to contribute, but yeah, I, I might, I might later, reach on, out. later on. I was going to ask you uh, if, like, anyone you could, you you would want to uh, like chat with or interview, uh, basically in the world. Who would it be? Oh wow! Not celebrities, not e gamers. Yeah. Okay. You can. You can. You're allowed oh, an e-gamer. Okay. Okay. I mean, yeah. You're allowed Carlson or someone. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. prawn. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, no, I don't want to derail you with that. Do you want to, you want to keep on going? Oh, you, you on just, the other? you just, you just did. I just did. <laughs> so, so, well, the chat raised the issue of having a guest again. So yeah, we'd we'd have Warren on any day if he, if he wanted, but um, yeah, yeah, Warren. Who, if you, who I, else would you? If you ever tune in, by the way, and you're you're listening, by by all means, man. If you ever want to come on and yeah, uh, t- take control of of the show for a little while and talk about whatever you think is most important, we'd love to have you on at exactly. any time. So, exactly. um, See, who who would you who would you be so, like itching to interview? God, I don't know. I, I the the first, my mind immediately goes to somebody who maybe has some expertise in AI machine learning and finance 
Um, yeah, yeah. That might be. Oh, that might be. By some... the way, you you sound you sound a lot like a prairie populist in, in some sense to me. Brian Romanchuk is a good yeah. MIT yeah, 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 yeah. analyst, trader, math math guy. I don't. I don't think he's into new networks, but he, but he he'd be good. Yeah, but he's a bit dry. He he, do, he doesn't come with the comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, think, good, I think I've seen some of the stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I've ran across his, uh, stuff on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, not sparkling conversation, but really interesting, deep stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. what about what about anyway, you? Have, I mean, no, well, what about you? you think about it. You, oh man, you know, I I'm gonna be I'm gonna be such a pushover. I I'm I, I'm not gonna think of anyone in, in the MT circle. <laughs> I'm gonna be thinking of like you know Lenny Suskind or some oh yeah yeah. Or yeah, something yeah yeah like that. yeah yeah um yeah so probably that's probably what I'd do but yeah I don't know that's a question I often okay uh, I'm gonna I'm think gonna... about like who who would we want to chase but anyway let them chase us we we're, we're just gonna be here. Uh, the thing, the thing about getting too popular is that um, your chat stream starts to just wildly scroll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's such a bad thing. And then, and then you just sort of know you're in the clickbait territory, and yeah, you know, you, I don't know, it just like, it's like, do you, do you really want the live stream to be that popular? Yes, I maybe, do. maybe yes, you I have, do. Then break out into two <laughs> live streams. Yeah, I know you yeah, do. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You, you want you, you want to have a like a thing where you do a live stream where yeah you're, you're doing the whole sort of uh, you know it's it's now almost a cliche it's almost corny that you just you know you know pop off on on all sorts of topics and uh, <laughs> your chat scrolling through with you know uh, um, you know what's his name I, I even forget the guy, the dude's name now little frog emojis and everything Pepe. Pepe the Frog. Pepe, Pepe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just goes wild. Ah, oh, that's hilarious. And then you got to have some secret little uh, live stream with just an inside group to actually. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. You, you know, so, so so I've actually I've actually thought this through. I actually have thought this through. Bijou, hold on a second, guys. Okay. One of the things I brought back for me uh, uh, from Florida was uh, just a, a wicked cold, man. God. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can we, hear it. We all we we landed Friday, and fri by Friday night, I, I just we the entire family was running a fever, and it was just all just uh, hit the yeah. exact. I'm worried. I'm worried your voice is not going to last, or at least tomorrow you're going to be a bit. Yeah. Scratching. Yeah, it's 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 all good. Um, okay. Where were we going? I, I forgot where I was going. Uh, maybe someone to interview or the live stream chat. Scrolling. Oh, the live stream uh, chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I actually, I actually, <laughs> I thought about this uh, because oh, I, yeah? I, I am going to start. I, I've had a few people message me on Twitter. I've had a few people also leave comments in, in chat, and, and I have beyond the live streams. I've, I've, I've to a certain extent given up on on YouTube a little bit. Live streams are going great. They're driving traffic to the channel, that sort of stuff. Um, but I'm going to make a push for a few months on on YouTube, and would like to grow the YouTube side of thing. Um, <clears throat> But, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, if things ever really take off it, and there's, you know, our, our core audience that helped build us or something like that, I, it, you know, I, I think we could create some sort of discord channel or something like that for, uh, kind mm -hmm. of the core crowd to, to join on, um, where, right. yeah, you know, we can continue to funnel cool. me yeah. me meaningful but questions our way, uh, and kind of split between. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so yeah, I, I, it's it's something I've I've thought about is uh, it's a, and the live stream does continue to grow, guys. I, I appreciate everyone coming on in, those who are subscribed, and you guys hit that like button. It continues to grow, and you know, it's awesome to see. Uh, but Bijou, I also agree. I, I, to, to a certain extent, I, I enjoy showing up every week, no matter what. We have a great crew here, and uh, you guys are the yeah. best. Um, and it's it's a lot of fun to uh, to to do these streams. Um, else, we just got Jack appearing in the chat. Yeah, Jack. I don't Jonah, know if I've... Jonah Furman and Michael Hudson. Yeah, Michael Hudson's good, uh, good with the Chinese. You, I tell you, they they need someone uh, over there for MMT because otherwise they're going to be just insanely uh, neoclassical, New Keynesian, Chicago school, China. <laughs> it's like pretty bizarre. Uh, Josh, do you, do you know, do you know, do you know Michael. Hud sorry, did do you know Michael Hudson's uh, take on the Chinese economists? You're asking me this, obviously. Yeah, You're yeah. Asking me this. No, 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 no. You don't? Okay, so so this is this is what he says. I I, I believe him. I, I, I have no reason not to. He says like to a Chinese economist, 
like um, Marxism. Marxism means uh, just economics. Oh yeah, yeah. And the and the yeah. and the young kids are all Chicago school educated. So it's like you know, to a lot of them, Marxism. I, I don't know how how big a kind of simplification this is. You know, I have no idea really. But it's, uh, it's sort of interesting. So, so they still need, uh, you know, MMT, MMTs over there to um, uh, to stop uh, stop the insanity. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, you. I'll, I'll let you go go on your thing now. Yeah, and and Josh, real quick, I have I have thought about Twitch. There's a lot of stuff that Twitch has been doing that is just just doesn't set right with me anymore. I, I used and to actually stream my stream my gaming stuff that me and my buddies do on Friday nights on Twitch. And I, I finally switched over to, I've got a, I've got a burner account on YouTube now that I stream to. So it, it's, it's crossed my mind, but, um, and, and I know they have some fun tools, uh, for engagement, but, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, yeah, bring on Peter Schiff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound, this is gonna sound so cheesy. Actually, you're gonna hate me for even saying this, but I would love right now. I think if there's anyone that I could bring on, and if you'd be willing to show some of the work he's been doing, I'm really intrigued to see what Ty Keens has uh, in yeah. store on his uh, on his Minsky software and the macro model that he's been building recently. Um, I'm I'm geeked to see that start to come out. Uh, totally, that is that is something I've wanted to build, and if he's willing to put in the legwork and publish it, <laughs> then uh, you know, uh, even totally. even better because that I, I, that's going to be pretty big. And I know Bijou, for you and I, we've talked many times about you know that's that's an avenue we need to explore. Um, yeah, as, as well. Get, getting around to it slowly. Okay, we had some data come out today. We're going to change subjects here. We're almost into uh, hour two, but we had some data come out today. CPI came out today, continues to go lower. What's awesome about this, and I, I appreciate the Applied MMT guys. They tweeted out something along this vein. Um, and uh, I, Charles, I have no fun. It's, no, no, no. There's no fun here. Uh, Applied MT guys <laughs> tweeted out something along this vein, and so did uh, Joe Weisenthal as well, is uh, the simple fact that um, clearly we can have zero unemployment and lower inflation at the same time, because that is exactly what we have witnessed uh, for the last 12 months, uh, 13 months now, right? We've seen unemployment push lower, and we've seen since the peak back in June of 2022, inflation pushed lower. Yep. So uh, this is just, yep. this, this yep. is a victory. I mean, there's nothing else to do but take a victory lap here and say, we told you Pretty so, much. right? I mean, we, we absolutely told you so. Um, now, granted, I, I think, and, and Warren uh, pointed this out as well, certainly the trajectory <laughs> of CPI uh, you know, if you're just to, to, to continue this trend, um, the, the, the long-term trend of CPI, uh, has continues to be quite elevated, right? The, the you know, the longer term trajectory, but overall, I mean, we're still seeing a, a decrease in the rate of change of CPI and, um, which is, you know, really, really kind of where the rubber meets the road, but we continue to see inflation fall while employment hits, unemployment hits lower and lower levels. So, uh, congratulations to MMT, and and I think it's, I think it's absolutely time for. Um, let's see, you just message me here. I'll I'll take a look at that. Uh, but I I would like to start to see a response from anyone in the non MMT crowd to kind of explain what it is that we are uh, that we are witnessing because. Only MMT would have been uh, only MMT would have been thinking that something like this would have would have uh, been playing out. So I don't know if you have any thoughts. Uh, whoops. Yeah. You, well, you you definitely have to ask people for a response. Uh, and you, you know, like real macro econ guy and all those will probably give you some oh, some yeah. pretty interesting responses. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they all have a good story. Yeah. The one recently was like, um, I think I I think I I just made some sort of uh, you know com comedic comments on some some blue blue check uh, twitter person oh who, who, yeah and, and i and i and i just get, had a little bit of fun with it it was pretty i was pretty proud of the little uh sort of wry humor that i was able to develop there real real quick this like in like one minute sort of thing i'm not sure exactly how if it was that thread or something else that real econ guy sort of tagged me but anyway 
he he says something, and so I I reply about you know the usual stuff. He would be wrong, blah blah blah. Government has to borrow or tax, and uh, I sent back a little response, and then uh, and then he, he comes back at me and says, ah, oh, you know you. You're totally straw manning me and all this. You know, I never, I never said that or something. I, I think, I think it was yeah. If you, if you, if you pay off the national debt, including all cash and deposits and and bonds, you know, the economy, you know, just crashes. Everyone, everyone loses all their money, sort of thing. But, but I, I actually wasn't replying to him, so I was honestly able to say, uh, dude, I wasn't actually replying to you. <laughs> uh, but in any case, something, 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 and um. After, you know, and then I think he came back to me again and said, uh, "Well, you should put your money where your mouth is and trade the uh, Turkish lira or something." <laughs> this is the sort of thing you get. It's like it's like, to, you know, uh, he, I think his his setup was, "Oh, MMT, yeah, they yeah, know yeah, yeah, the interest rate yeah. effect. They yeah. think they know that you know, yeah. going to lower rates will firm up the lira and uh, lower their inflation." And I'm just like, dude, you know. Uh, why would why on earth would I trade the Turkish lira? I I can't control the interest rate policy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, anyway, uh, I think it's a good it's a good idea to ask for ask for their uh, narrative and to see see how twisted uh, into the pretzels uh, they can they can uh, they can make themselves. So, but it's it, like, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, you're good. I was just like it, for MMT, it's almost a bit comical it's like because because they're going to make up a story anyway and, and they're going to have to leave their own story yeah and uh what it's just like for us it's just it's kind of i don't know it's like an anthropological phenomenon we just get to look at all of this you know uh decline of the mainstream neoclassical economics it's not it's not it's not they're, they're all bad like like you can say you know supply demand and so forth x um on markets uh, that are reasonably, you know, free of monopoly, and so on and so forth. So there are stories that they get right, but, um, but like you say, it's like their analysis of the macro. Uh, you know, I, I just imagine. Well, I can't. I can't imagine. You have to. You have to read it before you can actually have a good laugh at it. But then, then they see us laughing at it, and they just say that we're insane, and we're saying they are insane. Yeah, it's like you know, yeah. two two different worlds sort of looking at each other and saying, <laughs> "You guys are a joke." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, I still think uh, it's good the, to ask. The big ask difference, the, the big difference is, and uh, um, Michael, man, I'm, I'm glad to see your tweet the other day too that that you're having success. The big difference is MMT consistently yeah. predicts the future, and you can make money off of it. So, I mean, that right. that, that to me is uh, is what ultimately got me sold on uh, on the MMT yeah. case. Uh, that has that has to be popularized a bit more. I don't think people actually know know that. that yeah. Can be done. Okay. Now, while I want my channel and everything we're doing here to completely take off, I, I still need a pretty low saturation level of people who fully realize <laughs> how how, right. how prices are set in markets, right? Because uh, I can't right. I can't exploit it if everybody's aware of it. Um, That's right. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that one's gonna. Thankfully, I, I mean, here's the thing, man. I, I, this is, I okay. When I when I started this up back in uh, 20, 2016 is when I started. April of twenty sixteen is when I started this, and I, I always had this this sense where I'm like, oh my god, uh, Doug, you've really stumbled across something um, here, and people are gonna realize this, and you need to like, <laughs> you need to get on this because once other people realize this, they're gonna do exactly what you're doing, and beat you to it. Right. And then, you know, the, the opportunity is going to be gone. Um, and, uh, and you know, that, yeah, that this just needs to grow and, and I, you know, I, I need to, to monetize this and all that sort of stuff. Um, and to kind of get my cut and, and that w once people see it, right, they're, they're just going to be like, Oh my God, I can really exploit markets and make money here. And, and then, you know, yeah. I'll get my one shot. No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like putting out some great research here, right. That is like I, I, it, it, connecting the dots, yeah. uh, for, 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 uh, yeah. for anyone to see a lot of breadcrumbs yeah. spelling it all out. And, uh, um, more than breadcrumbs, you're giving them porridge. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, little healthy and, and, oats. And, and they're still telling me I'm, I'm, 
I'm out of my mind. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. free money right there. Take it yeah. if you want it, guy. Go, but go trade the lira. Put yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I don't need to trade the lira. I'm telling you exactly what I'm trading. Um, and uh, y- you know, and it's working, and it's worked many times in the past. And uh, I mean, am I, am I uh, Warren Buffett? No, but uh, am I doing a lot better than? Um, yeah. you know, the, the, the buy and hold, uh, any, any other benchmark you want to, you want to, uh, place against me? Yeah. Um, that's always blown my mind. I, I really thought that like, that, that they would, they would see the ability to predict the future with MMT and that, that it was really there and they changed yeah. their mind, but no, they just, they didn't. It's, it's, it's wild. What, it really what, is what wild. You can also, what you can also add to that is, um, parsimony. I mean, I'm not sure if non-scientists will understand, but um, any any scientist who's interested in finance and economics will understand that that your models, um, okay, so the neural networks are not doing much more than uh, you know extrapolation, and the Bayesian uh, Bayes Bayes models um, are pretty simple mathematics, and you're you're not applying like hundred you know hundred staffers or PhDs into this. And so you've got very good parsimony or uh, uh, yucky uh, information complexity, or whatever. You know, you you get a lot, um, a lot of alpha from not too much computation. <coughs> I want to say I don't know. I'm just guessing. I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had to look up. <laughs> I had to look the Elliott up. Wave stuff. I had so, to... someday you got to go through the Elliott Wave stuff with me because because I I do know the biological stuff with that, but um it's and it's an interesting other topic. I don't want to derail us. Yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. But just just bookmark that one Elliott Wave. It's you, a, yeah, we can go over it. Day. Yeah, we can go over it sometime. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sometime, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You had anyway. said part. You you mentioned parsimony. So um... yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to Google it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you've used the word many. You've used the word many times. I don't know. I've, I've got the vocab- yeah. I've got the vocabulary of a fifth grader. Okay, okay so it means, uh, it no, means uh, you get a lot more yeah. than you than than you put in. Uh, principles get, the most acceptable. Big, big bang oh, for your okay. buck out of your math models. So a very simple mathematical model explains okay. a lot. Okay, so so when I Google, there was a principle that uh, uh, that the most acceptable explanation of an occurrence, phenomenon, or event is the simplest involving the fewest entities, assumptions, or changes. But what you're using yeah, it is no, more. Cycles. But what you're using it is okay. Oh, I get what you're. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think you're. I think you're right. Yeah, I think I'm. I think I'm right about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, you look at Ty, Ty Keynes' um, uh, Minsky models, they're also very good parsimony. So, um, I mean, you can, you can put a lot of parameters in a, in a um, Steve Keen dynamical systems Minsky model and, you know, go to town and really overfit it if you want to, but you don't have to. If you're not interested in um, low-frequency fluctuations yeah, and yeah, economic yeah. indicators and, that, and, you, and you, you just smooth your time series out, Get rid of the low frequency noise, uh, which is a lot of psychology speculation, blah blah blah. Then, um, you know, it's not going to be what what I would have to caveat that with is a, is a highly parsimonious parsimonious model is not going to be um, necessarily all that accurate, but it's going to track yep. Uh, yep. the real system really well, yep. really yep. well, yeah. And that's what sort of the, those models do, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's why we're, that's why we're interested in them, and that's why. Steve and Ty and all those guys do do the Minsky models because it's a it, it's also better insight because you can build a fake model of a fake economy and play around with it and get all sorts of real insights and then um, you know have have a think about uh, how how that can be used as a little bit of an extra add to MMT a little bit of extra add to the dynamical analysis of what happens in the real economy yeah yeah and you and your big uncertainty there is policy. Yep. You don't you don't have you don't have levers yep. to yep. affect the policy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Try but other than that, it's high, it's very parsimonious. And try, so, yeah, try and decide a lot. Try try to have out. the model decide what uh, McCarthy and Biden are gonna do. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you all love to have that model? Yeah. Uh dear. Maybe there is. Maybe they're so stupid, like they're so so Neanderthal <laughs> that it is possible to model their brains. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah, yeah. Oh God! 
uh, <laughs> Peter Schiff brain. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see where where are we going? We had uh, we did parsimony. Well, we had Charles Grip in the chat. Oh, I to, did want to know. Uh, yeah, give, yeah. His, give yeah. his take on 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 how things are going. Yeah. So yeah, we would maybe. Uh, it's a bit hard to do it in YouTube chat. You should email email Douglas and uh, give Douglas your thing, Charles, and then um, you know, uh, if it, if it sounds good, we could you know invite you on uh, the show yeah. to talk, so, talk over your models, uh, but. Ty, Ty Keen's also we want want to you know talk over his models, but but you got to email. I think email Douglas rather or, than try yeah, to hit, desperately hit, type yeah, it yeah. into the chat. <laughs> hit me up, on, hit me up on Twitter. But I I I, I think what I'd be most yeah. interested in is what is the neoclassical explanation for what we're witnessing right now, which is uh, nearly record low unemployment, uh, de- decades re- record low unemployment, and inflation coming down at the same time uh, as measured by CPI. Right. That, did you put up that Clint Bellinger tweet that? Yeah, like, I, yeah, I posted that. Yeah, that, I posted that for a few seconds there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that resonated with what Ty Ty uh, mentioned last week that you know interest rates are not at a at a historically all time high, and so neither is the inflation rate, and so it's like people are losing their hair hair on fire <laughs> over a lot of the um, inflation hysterics and hysteria. You know, the most important thing to worry about is that it's just regressive. It's just uh, widening the wealth wealth gap in a very unfair way the government putting their finger on the um or the fed at least putting their finger on the economy and saying ah we like rich people more than you poor buggers yep 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 god <clears throat> yeah then when i think about it and the goal is to create i mean obviously they're they're doing a terrible job at creating unemployment but then when they actually want to create unemployment uh yeah i mean it's it just they, they lower the interest rate then they get the unemployment and then they say oh it's a la- it's the lag it works it's a lag yeah okay okay so this is okay this is this is what i wanted to look up actually yeah no, I'm, I'm glad you brought this up this is one of the things i wanted to touch on because here's what i'm worried about um whoops that's not actually one of uh fed rate countdown um i'm gonna bring this up he Here's what I'm worried about. Okay, right now it's, it's essentially uh, uh, for the, for the June. So we're 34 days away from the June uh, for the next hike. Yeah, the, the June hike um, from the uh, from the Fed. We're 34 days away, and right now it's an, uh, effectively we'll call it 95% chance that there's going to be no rate hike. Right, so uh, z- zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no rate, no rate hike coming in in June. What 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 I'm interested in. And and I, I don't uh, I I don't know how um, this will play out or how how we could even model this or whatever right but if there's an acceleration function that if it's not only just the rate of change but it's the you know the rate of change of the rate of change of the interest rate right so if we do get as you know a couple zeros in a row here right then the acceleration that we've seen over the last year of the interest rates is, is obviously going to plummet right. Um, even if the interest rate stays sideways, the acceleration function is going to plummet. And undoubtedly, we've seen prior to each bank crisis, it, it was they started to pull back the interest rate. That seemed to be uh, the trigger to kind of prick the bubble, if you will. Could that happen even if we stay sideways for just a few months, given the massive acceleration that we've seen in interest rates to begin with, right? In other words, when, it, when I look at Steve Keen and, and Ty's models, uh, the, the, the Minsky models, it's the slowing down of, I think I have this right, right? It's the slowing down of the repayment of interest that puts pressure on the economy that can collapse it. And if I'm right with the way the interest rates work, then That'll actually happen when the Fed starts to take its foot off the gas. Now, granted, we'd still have elevated interest rates, so there still should be this income channel to support. But is there something that's happening in the dynamic uh, of uh, uh, really of what would be kind of the credit side of it that could collapse things? That is my concern um, going forward is that even if the Fed pauses for a relatively short amount of time, if it's the acceleration rate that matters, uh, then uh, then we could be um, that we could be in for something crazy happening here in the latter half of 2023. But maybe it's not. I mean, uh, maybe 
maybe it isn't that that acceleration function. Maybe it is just what the level is at as long as we don't start going back to zero uh, zero rates. Anyway. Too quickly, yeah. Those, those, those are my thoughts, and I think something to definitely be paying attention to um, that, uh, that that could end up causing – causing some issues going forward. Because I don't know if you were tracking exactly what I was saying. I don't know if I explained it as well as I could have there, but uh, we are going to finally get a pause. Uh, we are, we are, I mean, I guess, at this point, my point is we're going to get a pause in the rate hikes, right? And if, in fact, lower right. rates are more disinflationary, then that, that's concerning to me. I don't know. That, that's concerning to me. And I think uh, uh, I think that's something to keep, uh, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep on the radar yeah, so that, sort of thing. The dynamics are tricky. I mean, because although although you can you can use legs to uh, you know ex post facto um, neoclassically uh, claim that you were right. Oh yeah, they did it did bring down unemployment. We're just in a lag period. Blah blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> you can always yeah do, just kind of do that because there is a lot of uh, cyclicity and, and and you know although although uh, what do I want to say okay so although the private sector acts pro cyclically. There is nevertheless always going to be a um, a, a massive correction, and uh, if the government isn't sort of uh, acting aggressively enough counter cyclically, and so you do, you know, get all these all these cycles and effects with lags. So the lags, it's not. I'm saying not, I'm not saying the lags are fictional. They are there, and so it's unclear to me some of the time constants, some of the uh, timings and frequency of, of, of how it plays out like that. And it very much, I think, will depend on how rapidly they, they lower the rates. If they do it real slow, I see I see the economy adjusting reasonably smoothly. Okay. If they do it too fast, I, I see um, something almost similar to like a debt ceiling. I, 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 I see it like it's, it's taking your foot off the accelerator. Too, too much a of a, too yeah. Hard. Too much of a... And you get a bit of whiplash and yep. so forth. Yeah. Yeah, especially if the gov- if the um, Congress don't uh, do a fiscal adjustment uh, to ke- to keep to make the up for the, supported. Yeah, 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 to make yeah. up. And the thing about the rates is that it's um, not an inflation accelerator. So you, if you want to keep the inflation going and keep keep uh, lowering unemployment, you have to keep pushing the rate up a little bit. It's not a naira. It's not an accelerating effect. You have to work hard. You know, to try yeah. and convince the Fed keep pushing up interest rates so, you know go go sort of full Argentina or t- full Turkey or something uh, which is not going to happen so they're going to have a hard time uh, keeping inflation high and of course they they want to keep inflation down and, and get it lower and so uh, you know eventually and at least for the USA I think it's going to adjust and I think the question is you know how rapidly so how much it hurts people who are, who are making bets or those who can't afford to make the bets who are just going to get hit. But again, there's another factor is that it's it's been a COVID sort of a period, right? So um, it hasn't been a sort of a long-term ideological sort of position to raise rates. They, they didn't really want to raise rates. Yeah, and yeah. New Zealand and Australia, they resisted for a long yep, time. Yep, yep. And then they got carried away. Oh, uh, you know. Yeah, we're not ever, going to get ever, reelected. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone else we, is if doing we have it. too yeah. much inflation. Yeah. yeah, everyone else is doing yeah. it. Blah blah blah. Your your currency might de- depreciate a little bit on the forex market if you don't. Japanese resisted for a while, and and then had a bit of a flurry flirt with the ho- ho- raising their rates, but then sort of seemed to calm down again. So that didn't really hurt them on the forex exchanges. It's just hurting the speculators a bit, I guess, who are trying to make bets based on policy, <laughs> and. And then the thing is, the other thing is in Australia, okay, I didn't check New Zealand data. I, I, it's, a, it's a long-term project to try and replicate your dashboard your dashboard and things for uh, New Zealand. It's a bit harder to sometimes get out get out da- our data, but it does, it is there. But for Australia, the, re- the in- inflation is, is definitely coming down. And, you know, a lot of the s- supply uh, blockages, channel blockages are, uh, easing up and so forth and so um the thing about thing though is is that the reserve bank of australia the central bank are still wanting to raise rates because get this they think the inflation it's coming down they think it's not coming down fast enough <laughs> yeah 
so uh i don't know there's a lot of stuff like that that's uh, really tricky to uh, to forecast to predict anyway while i've been going on that there's some stuff in the chat yeah. uh, let, let me uh yeah let, anything you want to add to that yeah let, let me let me let me think this through and let me make sure I, I my my thought process here. So when I'm when I'm looking at the Minsk, in my mind I'm thinking of like the classic debt deflation Minsky model, right? Right. And it is, it is because the when when the circuit slows down, assuming you have a, a large credit expansion, when the turnover of the money in the system slows down that is when the pressure of the large debt load begins to be felt by the lar- by the broader economy right i mean th- that is when the the bubble gets pricked uh mm. am i right in that am, am i you got say say that again i just want to get it it's the put it through the okay ty, ty gave me the answer so let me read this. The financial sector makes expenditures slower than uh, household. High rates just equal distribution of income in the private sector. So in theory, eventually higher rates would lower consumption. I don't, ah, I just, Ty, Ty one of these days we're going to have to have a call because I, I just don't know if I fully track that. Um, yeah, too many assumptions, I think, going on there. Because you can look at Turkey, you can look at, you can look at the real world and find countries where that, where that um, mental model does not apply. They're going gangbusters. Okay, it's not great for everyone. Yeah. Uh, great massive income and wealth distribution uh, thing, the fix and so forth. But I think um, I think what I would be concerned is the rate of change of the interest rate, not not just a high interest rate per se. Yeah, okay. And, and I guess I guess that's what I'm I guess what I'm getting at is that in, in, in I guess in the way that I think of it, um, k- kind of shorthand way, but the higher interest rate is um, is driving the the, uh, uh, the price structure higher, and, and it increases the velocity of money. Okay, so the higher yeah, interest yeah. rate cr- increases the velocity of money from everything um, from everything we talked about, and and I, I mean I think I think we've all but proven that. <laughs> Over the last year, that's in fact the case, right? And if if a slower velocity of money puts pressure on the private debt side of things, right? It, it, then we, we we the question I would have is even if we stay at the current rate level, right? So if rates stay flat, then that means the acceleration of rates is actually going to start to go down, right? So if yeah. Right. If if a slowdown on the velocity of money can be caused by the acceleration of interest rates decreasing, and that slowdown in velocity can potentially be the pin to prick the bubble, then yeah. my argument is we could see a potential crisis emerge, even if yeah. rates stay flat, right? Even if we stay at the the same level. Um. Because of what? Be, because of the slowdown. Because down. the velocity is the yeah. slowdown. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 Uh, good. I'm glad it finally clicked. <laughs> okay. You could, you could see that. You could yeah. see that. Um, but you don't have to keep up, keep pumping up interest rates. It it all depends on all sorts of dynamics, right? So Ty's point there that that the Minsky model shows that on to decline in the wage share, but but if um. The wage share is a distributional issue. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily uh, impact a consumer's ability to purchase and so forth. So what what happens there is you, you've got to look at the term structure of prices as well. So um, if the wages do not go up, um, then then you you know, get a get a get a real crisis. You get drop off in sales, no pr- less profits. Uh, laid off workers and it spirals downwards but it doesn't have to spiral downwards if the government is pumping so much interest income uh through the interest income channel by the way derek uh, derek joined the chat and makes some really good points uh, because there are winners and losers and he's, he's absolutely right you know when the uh when the rates drop then the price <laughs> 
the price goes up for the bonds and the bond uh, bondholders make bank as well but you know they're not the, they're not doing a lot of trickle down so yeah, you get winners from the rate rate drops as well people on the right side of that uh, that equation but um, that's not that's not necessarily going to prevent a um, a pretty catastrophic you know crash or recession or whatever mass unemployment because uh, they're not uh, they're not going out hiring workers to you know they got a limited amount of food they can buy and cleaning that they cleaning services that they need and so um, yeah the other thing is the Minsky models are um, you know they're highly parsimonious like I said but you still have to make certain assumptions and you have to use some behavioral behavioral equations and so forth and so you, you can get it badly wrong as well you can you can make a minsky model that is you know completely uh, not describing the real economy describing some other economy so that's why you have to that's why you want to talk to um ty and the minsky model is because you want to really understand you know you can't take their models at face value it's just that they're way <laughs> what i want to say way more realistic i mean they're just in a different ballpark to dsg e models and isln type based models because they have they have the dynamics correct but you still have to have a load of, a whole lot of assumptions and so forth so i wouldn't i wouldn't when i when my twitter handle is math will suffice it's a bit of a joke <laughs> like like i'm a math geek as well but um <coughs> I, I understand modeling. Right? It's your your model is only good as your assumptions and your input data. Um, I'm gonna have to rewatch this whole part because I got I got to rethink I got to yeah. think this stuff. It's, it's been a long time since I've spent time in the uh, yeah kind of the Minsky the Minsky stuff. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm and it's like the higher interest in, interest is a um, is two sides of ledger. There's, there's people earning interest. There's the savers and the borrowers. So it's not it, it's a higher higher interest or or high interest rate is is a tax on some people uh but it's not a tax on on others right so uh, it's a gauge it's a it's a re-gauge it's if it's policy set if you're on a float i guess i guess all of this is prefaced by that like you gotta understand you're on a floating exchange rate i think and and I, i'm gonna say that like and, and people are not gonna understand what i mean by that and i don't have the time really to go into it but it's critical. I just want to say, you have to go read Warren, read uh, especially especially Warren Mosler. I, I don't think the other MMTs um, do it quite as well. At least I haven't read it. Maybe Brian Roman Chuck does it. I'm not sure. Um, oh, maybe John T. Harvey. I'm not. I'm not sure really. But but it, it, soft currency economics is is the initial place to start reading. And that the um, floating exchange rate is just absolutely critical to understanding all, all of this MMT stuff. If you want a fixed exchange rate or a gold peg, you, you've got to com build a completely different model. Completely different. It's, it just changes completely. And uh, Warren's papers on that, um, I think one's called analysis, uh, Framework for Analysis of Currency and Other Commodities. And there's a couple of ones you can find them on his website. They they go through that and he uses some examples: uh, the Russian ruble uh, crisis and the Hong Kong currency board. Uh, two very two different systems. We they don't have a floating exchange rate, and you can see the interest rate effects are in, entirely different. So everything that we've been talking about does not apply. <laughs> anyway, just putting that out there. It's, it's a bit technical to go into, and yeah. If I, if I try to if I try to do that on a live stream, I'm probably going to uh, mess things up or just be scratching my head a bit to remember uh, how it all works. But it's not difficult. It's not really really difficult. It's, you can you can understand it. Yeah. Anyway, that's the that's the tie of, I, I know and love right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Blair Fix is good. Yeah. You yeah. mentioned Blair Fix. Derek brought up Blair. Yeah. Yeah, he's done some really good data analysis. He he's one of those economists who uh who ha has a again a bit of a fetish for the data. 
in a good way and doesn't doesn't necessarily subscribe, I guess, to MMT, you might say, or but he's definitely not a neoclassical, so he's he's looking at a lot of data and giving some really good uh, good analysis, which supports the MMT uh, narrative, I think. He's 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 trying to sh trying to figure out where you get you know high interest rates um, cause recessions or or mass unemployment and, you know couldn't find it and I think he also did a look at the Phillips curve or whatever and you know again couldn't find it is that right Derek I'm not oh, sure that's, oh that's really I forget cool. he did a couple of really good articles they're a bit long so we've got to spend some time reading them so I, I don't know what we do for Douglas. Someone's got to summarize it all. Oh, God, I know. It. I know. Yeah. Stick it into chat, GDP. <gasps> Can you please yeah. summarize this? 150 oh. word summary of Blair oh. <laughs> Apparently, uh, some of the some of the plugins that are coming out any day now for chat GPT are going to allow you to like upload your CSV files and stuff and uh, right. you tell uh, chat GPT to, to build off a CSV file. Um, so, yeah, that's. Oh, we're so close. We're so close. Um, the AI stuff is something I had on my yeah, notes for today, Douglas, yeah, yeah. but I'm not sure if we get get to them. But, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, some really good I'm kind of wrapping up. to go the, into a third, 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 third hour, hour stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, What's on your mind? What do you want to let, me, let me actually go over we, real quick. One of the questions I had for you is one of the things I was trying to build uh, What was this idea of a a, a, a fair value while wow, the ai for csv files interests me a lot yeah I, I, apparently you're gonna be able to upload files now to chat gpt so it knows exactly what you're working with which, which i've actually been doing I, i've been working on a, a separate uh, unrelated project um and and chat gpt four at this point um has done a really good job where i'll make a like a like a, essentially a, a fake csv file that represents my my real data and i'm like hey this is what my csv file looks like uh this is the data can you you know can you do this for me um and, and it's it's been pretty spectacular well, how, how good it's been able to handle handle that good but um, here's the thing oh sorry i, I don't want to interrupt your stream thought you you were talking about no you're uh, fine you're fine I'm, I'm good i'm good to go now yeah, yeah okay man yeah because it, I mean, just jumping off that point. So um, I think Chat GPT and uh, whatever the other ones are, <laughs> DeepMind. Um, no, what's the other main competitor? I Chat know. GPT, you know, sort of blew up. But it, but it, but the thing is, uh, Meta, Facebook, Sports. Facebook slash Meta product, the the so-called Llama model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, got leaked. You know, yeah, I think it was accidental. Yeah. Yep. And so the open source or free software community. Yep. Yep. And please support free software, not open source. Open source freaking sucks. But it's still it's still um as far as it's open, it's it's good stuff too. But um the free software and open source community got a hold of the Lama yep, yep, model. Yep. And that's what generated the work that Yannick uh Kilcher and others are doing on okay. um, like open assistant. Yep. Yep. And there's now a whole community. So there's a whole ecosystem of large language models, you know, and you've got to understand it's only large language models, right? They can only do what the data you Correct. feed them yeah. Yeah. Uh, can, can uh, you know, mine from. So they can summarize human uh, knowledge, like like huge amount. I forget what the number is, right? It's in the hundreds of terabytes and so forth. Yeah. They can summarize huge corp corpus of data yeah. and, um, and, and mimic like what human analysis would do. Yep. And even some comedy, yeah, the comedy's not great. <laughs> obviously, not enough Monty Python out yeah. there in the actual world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good comedy, good comics are rare. But you know that. that but but in, in in other things, where where people write a lot and wherever they're getting their data from, I think it's from a lot of university, you know, like .edu websites and so forth, or wherever. Um, yeah. It's just capable of summarizing. You're, you're, you're trying. Super, what you're what you're trying yeah. to say is that uh, academics have zero sense of humor. So uh, yeah, Chat totally. GPT, we're we're doomed. The Chat GPT is, yeah. is a bit pathetic on the yeah. humor. It's corny. It's it's very yeah. corny, but yeah. it's, it's fun. So anyway, the open source uh, free software community has now got a whole ecosystem of these large language models. Like some can fit on a Raspberry Pi, and you can almost you can download it and work offline now on it. 
you don't need to go through uh, the cloud uh, services. Service. Yeah, 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 cloud services. Yeah. It's really quite impre- quite incredible. Uh, wait, so wait. one thing you can do, like this hugging face, have one, yeah. and you can just put PDF files and give it, yep. feed it to them. So, so I, yeah. I, I hope we're close to that. I, I hope we're close. I, I, I've had a friend who's been working on these for a while now. He's kind of telling me, because I, I, I've asked him, he, he's into he's into it and, and is, is doing it for yeah, his I own can. purposes. And I'm like, hey, let me know when it's finally, um, when it's finally there to use your own uh, large language model, local large language model where I can upload um, my own documents and it merges with, you know, the base model. Yep. Uh, right. And yep. then, yeah. And, and I think we're right. close to it. We're not, I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think we're really close. And yeah, I think we're really close. To, to me, and, that's, like, that's going to be a game. I mean, that's going to be an absolute game changer. Yeah. I, 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 mean, I know. In, in this, my, is, this is what I wanted to yeah, happen, right? Yeah. That's going to be. I want to accelerate this into the hands of the, the demos, the people that, you know, you democratize uh, some of these tools so they don't just become the preserve of, you know, the privileged, the wealthy the elites. And, yeah. and, and the exciting thing about it is, is that because they're some of them, I mean, they're not super powerful yet, but because they can run on a, on a, you know, reasonably yep. high end PC, it's quote unquote affordable, yep. you know, to people like you. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not fully democratized, but, um, Anyway, but I'm a nice but, guy. But, but, I, I'm, I'm a nice guy, and you have access to my PC between the hours yeah, of midnight yeah, yeah. and 8 a.m. Eastern time. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, exactly. So, so it's, it's good. It's, it's going in a good direction, I thought. God, I'm, I'm sorry for good. coughing the mic, guys. I keep trying to hit the mute button. Right. I, I apologize about that last one there. <laughs> okay. um, no worries. No worries. We understand. So the other the other thing, of course, is the uh, AI singularity, which I have a completely yeah. different take on yeah. on everyone, and and that's that's just interesting because because um, it's interesting that because there's progress in that area as well because um, you've got the OECD now have um, some principles, maybe regulations. I'm not sure. You know, they got to always sort out how to enforce them is is the real issue. Same with the MMT and the banking system and banking reforms and all that. It's like. As Warren says, you know, you need to have um, uh, regulations that can be enforced. Otherwise, it's no, there's no point. It's just you, you're just uh, creating bullshit jobs yep, for yep. I don't know Bu- bureaucrats and whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So um, you make you make banking simple and let the private sector do all the risk stuff. So with with um, with AI, it's a slightly different story, right? Because because the risks are very are very different. And uh, that's a different thing. But the regulators, you know, OECD at least is sort of, you know, making good strides uh, from what I heard. And um, uh, although no one's really in a panic about it, um, the whole thing, the existential threat that they talk about from an AI singularity, you know, from a yeah. from an AI becoming sentient or whatever yeah. and uh, like having its own goals to like um, preserve itself or whatever, so it needs to wipe out humanity, you know, the sci-fi story. Yep, yep. <laughs> this makes me laugh because it ain't going to happen. But, but okay, but it's really I, interesting. But, but it's really but he, interesting that the regulators understand that now, and they they're taking the sci-fi threat seriously, right? Yeah. And so they and so you got people like the guy resigning, um, the big AI guru, wrote the book on it. You know, uh, what's his name? I don't know, Not Stuart yeah. Russell, but the other yeah. one. I don't know. He Not resigned, sure. you know, resigned okay. from Microsoft I, so that okay. he could speak out. So it's all good. Okay. He, going in the right direction. He, he, here, here's the thing, though, from a philosophical standpoint, right? If, 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 if in fact, AI poses a threat, right, like uh, poses a threat to humanity, that, then no matter what, it is inevitable that it will eliminate humanity at some point. Like there, there's there's nothing we can actually do <laughs> to get in front of that. S- simply, uh, after the event. Yeah. It was too late. I, I would even say before the event, like if it is, no, some, no, no, no. I, yeah. I, okay. Okay. Firstly, firstly, you're predicating on the fact that it can become sentient and, and, uh, and all that. No, no, and no, so, I'm not, I'm not predicating. I, I'm saying if, if, uh, okay. What are you saying? If, if, if AI, if AI, could do that right i mean if, if it's a possibility oh, right. that, if that it could okay th- then yeah. it could th- then i would say that it almost has to be an inevitability as well 
Uh, uh, that, nah. That, um, nah. Nah. Because, because, um, <coughs> like, okay, yeah, it's a philosophically interesting topic, but the thing is, sentience is, is sentience. And you guys, you guys, you materialists, just, uh, you understand what it is because you experience it yourselves, but you don't know what it is. <laughs> Let, let's would even be, let's be even my point. Let, let's and even so, take the sen- so let's the even take the sentient comes... uh, discussion out of it, right? Let, no, let's see. you have to put it in because that's the whole singularity premise. It's got it. It's not a machine. It's not a computation. It becomes sentient, or as Ray Kurzweil says, it has a soul. Machines with souls. So you've got to. That's the whole singularity argument. I'm not. I'm. I'm not talking about the existential threat is not from AGI. That's my point. If it's just a computation, we control it. Someone could use it for extremely nefarious purposes, um, but they're limited by energy. They need electricity mm-hmm. and so forth. There are fundamental, uh, you know, statistical mechanical limits to what you can do with a computation. But with the sentience, it's it's just a vastly different thing. You've got empathy. You've got you know, you know, we, we only. I mean, okay, we only have a sample size of one species <laughs> that is that is truly known to be sentient in terms of abstract symbolic thought so it's a bit hard to make uh sweeping statements about it so based but based on the data based on <laughs> the sample size of one that we have you gotta at least you know, you're gonna maybe give some credence to the idea that it's going to have some sort of empathy it's going to have a theory of mind and all the philosophers of mind say this right it doesn't matter where they are on what generates consciousness. They could be, you know, panpsychists or materialists or dualists or whatever. Yep. But they all agree that you can't have that sort of sentience, that sort of inner subjective mental qualia without um, a sort of theory of mind and so forth. So this hypothetical AI, you know, now I'm I'm just doing sort of fun philosophy here but this this putative theoretical singularity which is actually sentient it's not just agi it's it's way beyond that it's like you know super it's like how the singularity people are saying it's going to have empathy it's going to be able to say yeah i could tread all over those ants and be a dick like the humans do you know wreck the planet but i'm not going to do that I'm gonna I'm gonna try to work with humans. I'm gonna be more like, you know, Doctor Who rather than Thanos. Okay, so it's not in it. all I'm saying, I'm I'm agreeing with you that it could be right. I don't think I'm disagreeing with you that it's inevitable. It's not inevitable at all. Because you you have no, no idea what no, this, what our actual no, sentient no, 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 no. mind is capable of doing. No, no, no. So it's what, not going to wipe out what, humanity. What, it's what going I'm, to preserve humanity is an interesting science experiment. What, what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say, <laughs> is that if AI could wipe out humanity, then it is inevitable that it will wipe out humanity. But yeah, no, I think I understood that. But what I'm but saying is, it, I'm saying what I'm saying true. is, yeah. I, and I agree. <laughs> so what, I, what, oh, I'm, okay. what I'm what I'm saying what I'm saying is when the policymakers are trying to get in front of this from yeah it wiping out humanity, that's a waste of time. Be, be, because if 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 AI is capable of doing that, right, th- then it it will get to that point. There's nothing we can do to stop no, it. No, 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 no. There's nothing. There's nothing policymakers could do to stop it from getting to that point. Uh, okay. If if a singularity, if a sentient AI can get to the point where it's capable of wiping out humanity, then it's capable of wiping out humanity. That's all. And yes, you can't stop that. But it doesn't mean it's not inevitable that it will wipe out humanity. Correct. Just that uh, what, it's what, capable. Yeah. What, what but I, humanity is already capable of wiping out humanity. Yeah. So it's, no, it's like, what, what are they talking about? That's not the issue. The issue is getting is the AI being undemocratically used is is the fundamental issue of today. Yeah, and all the other stuff is this fun philosophy. I, I mean, I have I have strong reasons to believe it never happened, but that's that's just from my yeah. understanding of what physics is, and and all you guys don't understand the physics. I mean, if you do, by all means, email me, let me know. He, my 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 point my my point I guess my my broader point would be this. I I, I think. We, we, you know, we're staying, we're staring down this this AI, the the barrel of this AI, 
And we're going to get a ton of misguided policy focused on trying to regulate AI, right? If it yeah. if it turns yeah. out that AI is in fact a threat to humanity and, and life as we know it, it's that whether we regulate it or not. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, that's a bit insane. Insane. Yeah, that's a bit like uh, yeah, the ga- the 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 gates, the horse bolted. Yeah, the GDs out of the bottle. That, it, that, I agree with you okay. on that. And so my my point is where we need to be focused with regulation is not on regulating the development of AI. We need to allow whatever is about to happen 10 years from now to happen today as soon as possible, right? Like, let's just get there and find out what's at the end of this AI tunnel. What we need, what, what, <laughs> we, what we need to do instead from a policy perspective is regulate the economic side of things regulate the yeah, equ- yeah. the equity side of things right oh, uh, yeah. i mean I, I still think you're you're overblowing the singularity threat crisis thing no right? no i, I but if, I, if, I, if I'm regulators saying, want to do that they're not harming anyone in, in doing that it's just wasted bureaucracy because yeah but that's but that's what I, okay that, that, that's what i'm saying because I, I i think a, a yeah, very yeah. realistic threat is we end up with the dystopian capitalist society that every leftist has feared Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. T- to me, that's the that is the real threat. Right. Like the, I totally agree. With right. You there, yeah. and, and what I'm what I'm trying to say is, it, it is a it, it is a, a it is a moot point to try and build you know a, a concrete bunker for America out of <laughs> out of the fear of know. you know nuclear arms race yeah, right uh, or nuclear war and so so what I'm saying is. Let's just do everything we can to promote the development yeah. of AI and say, yeah, if it, if it ruins humanity, then it ruins humanity. But it's likely not going to. Um, yeah, yeah. But what will... Yeah, they're, they're focusing yeah. on the wrong issue. Yeah, you're right. I think they're focusing on the wrong issue, but it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing for the nerds uh, to talk about this, this you know, hypothetical yeah. singularity that yeah, is yeah. never going to exist. Yeah. And it's very unsexy to talk about just general AGI and how to democratize it. It's it's not as sexy a topic, but I think I think regulators also understanding that right because um, there are a lot of people in uh, left space, but also the right wingers as well. I think it's a across the political divide issue that people don't want to see, um, you know, uh, some wealthy oligarchs just yep. um, monopolize yep. AGI. This is well before any singularity nonsense that, that people are worried about. It's like it's not the existential threat. The threat is that, you know, uh, it's this type of accelerationism from from AI that it gets way out of hand. It causes social unrest. And even then, the threat is social unrest. It's the pitchforks. The ultimate threat is that, you know, ordinary people are just going to rebel and it's going to be, you know, a bit of anarchy for an anarchy for a while or something like that. Because that'll that'll all happen, as you say, well before there's any sort of uh, other t- other type of crisis. Yep. yep. And um, and it also distracts from the other real crisis we face, which is ecological. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit a little bit interestingly related. Very interestingly related. Because if you use uh, AGI in a smart way, you can. Um, uh, increase standards of living and reduce energy consumption and yep. and and protect the environment. That's what I want to really push forward. That's why that's why it's not a good idea to just blanketly say, "Well, let's stop all this research." Uh, I think no, you got you got to have regulations in the right way that uh, push the research um, in the direction that'll help. Yeah. But having said that, it's really interesting because we know we do not need AGI to solve the ecological problems. <laughs> We've yeah. already solved them. We yeah. just don't implement them because yeah. of lack of political, yeah. you know, because yeah. of the powerful elites who control the political process and so forth. And we yeah. don't have democratic governments. And so if we had a, you know, um, the AGI <laughs> can help us uh, help people still do silly things like, you know, playing e-games and uh, without destroying the environment. <laughs> so so that that's a benefit like you you still increase your standard of living uh because you're using agi in a smart way and that's that i think is where we've got to push push things and 
Yeah, I think I think people understand that. Once they get over, once they also understand a little bit of MMT, understand that that, that automation is not an unemployment story; it's a productivity gain story, and and all the unemployment can all the um, unemployment can go away, and we can have full employment and, and lots of other more interesting things like like people playing. <coughs> Uh, e-games <laughs> yeah, for entertainment because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. freaking people watch that stuff just for entertainment <laughs> well that's a good that's a good kind of use of uh, people's time entertain each other but anyway yeah so we can avoid dystopians but it, it does require a lot of uh, ordinary people to start engaging in the political process and not become doomers and black pill and nihilists yeah yeah like if anyone I could go back in history, maybe and shoot, it wouldn't necessarily be Hitler. It'd be like Nietzsche and all those guys. <laughs> this is people that gave humanity no hope at all. It's like, God damn, they're far worse than a, like a fascist. I can deal with fascists, you know. Oh man, I kind of, I kind of like Nietzsche. I don't know, man. Um... <laughs> no, no, just, it's the effects of his, his thought. Is like no, I, I, a lot of yeah, no, I, I know, I know. Um. Ty, man, I, anyway. I love I love the old instant messenger stuff. Look at the good old days. Ty and I are having a chat back and forth. I, I, I wanted to go back real quick, too. Uh, Derek, I think you might have uh, dropped off the stream, but um, uh. I, I did want to point out, yeah, I, I did see Chad GPT play, Gotham, or the, the, the play chess in the Gotham Chess Review. And I, I got to tell you, just a cute story. My, my kids have started watching Gotham. All of a sudden, I have a chess playing family. It's great. It's like a dream that I've always wanted to have. And my my middle my uh, second oldest son recently beat me on the plane ride. We actually we brought a little magnetic board. Beat me on the plane ride um, for the first time with, without any without any handicap at oh, all. Wow. He was yeah yeah it was it was and it was damn impressive. I, I mean I, I was it, 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 you know I made a few mistakes, but um, I, I figured I could maybe make up from those mistakes. But he he didn't. Uh, he didn't relent, and that was uh, that was oh, that, that was that was good. But my kids are watching Gotham Chess, and and of course, you know, we're not going to have right. any any overlap in the YouTube we watch. But we do. I watch Gotham Chess as well, and I said something uh. that you know one of one of his lines is, "My kids are watching this," and they look up at me like, "You watch him too?" Yeah, 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 <laughs> cool. dude. It's like, oh my god, we watch yeah. the same. It's, uh, uh, the kid bonding. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. It was a uh, <laughs> happy father moment. Um, one of the yeah, things you got to get in there early to influence your kids, right? Yeah, very yeah, soon yeah. their peers <sighs> uh, start. You lose control. It is. So you've done a very good job getting them onto chess. It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I try to get my. I, I got my girls on Radiohead. So. <laughs> um, my my. My oldest, actually, I used to make him do uh, like chess drills. I actually, I wanted him. I mean, I, I forced him to get into chess, uh, and he he just oh. he didn't like it. But the other kids, I never really pushed it on him, and, and they are all really taken yeah. to it. So that was that was a, a lesson huh. learned. Um, but my oldest, my oldest got into a passion of mine when I was younger. I used to really be into fitness and bodybuilding. Clearly, uh, clearly, I've let that. Uh, <laughs> die down a little bit but he's really got into bodybuilding and fitness and so that's been kind of fun i, I wish i could keep up with him um i wish i could keep up with him uh, but... it's a losing battle yeah. oh it is it is he'll re he'll realize later when he's dead yeah <laughs> he yeah yeah can't keep that forever um well, I, I pretty much do <laughs> you're like well done I'm like, if you, if you I'm were like as, i can uh... still i can still outrun my daughters it's insane nice nice uh but not the longer distances they they uh they have yeah i i don't i don't run long distance really that's my problem so my my uh eldest daughter she can she can hill climb uh way okay. better than me i'm like sucking it in man <laughs> it's terrible um yeah I, i'm still anyway. i i am still I am still stronger than my son and, and we'll lift and stuff. And actually that we, we went yeah. to the gym together while we were on vacation. And then I, I mean, I, I, I showed him that I'm still, but he is, oh, he, man. he's ripped. Um, I, I, I think mean, the I'll, actual I'll give, I'll strength doesn't decline, does it? No. Yeah. I mean, well, I still, yeah. I mean, I explained to him, there's this thing that it's called yeah. dad strength that you get as you get into your thirties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can pile yeah. on muscle for quite a while until you start, uh, yeah, degenerating. Uh, Josh, to be quite honest, no, I was pissed that I lost, man. I, I, I'm like, oh, how the hell? I bet. How you the, had to be. 
how the hell did I miss that move? And then he just kept going at it, man. I mean, he just didn't stop. Oh. It was it was unrelenting. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was just you unrelenting. Know, I, I mean, I was I, I I was so proud of him that he just kept finding the right moves. Um, we did end up playing again uh, later that week. We played a really good match, and I mean, the first thirty th- first thirty moves, from what I could tell, were were super accurate. So I did beat him, though. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, all right, we're, we're about to hit the third hour here. Bijou, before uh, yeah. uh, uh, so you beat him up after after what he wanted. Yeah, yeah. No, I, mean, I was I was really proud of him, but I mean, I also <laughs> wanted it to be that he knew I that he knew that he really beat me, right? I mean, it, I was I was going for it. I, I didn't want to lose. Um, and, and I've always, I've always told them too, like, look, I, I will, I'm always going to try my hardest. If you want to do a handicap, you want to take, when we first started playing, I, I would let them take a queen. I mean, we, we literally started six months ago. This is how much he's, he's kind of come up six months ago. Uh, we were playing and he got to take my queen and a rook off the board when we would start. Uh-huh. And, you know, I, I would still, it'd be an even match. And I'm like, really? look, I'm going to go for, yeah. go, go as hard as I can here. But, um, yeah. it's been a, it's been pretty fun to see it all play out. Uh, wow. Let's see. I, I did have a question for you, and, and guys, you yeah. just kind of listen into. I mean, this is just a, a this is not this is not planned. This is me just trying to understand uh, the the angle that I want to take with this model. So, one of the models I'm trying to build right now, Bijou, is like I said, kind of a um, is uh, coming up like a, a fair value estimate of what the S and P price should be based on the historical deficit and overall private debt, right? So those, those are my two features, and my target mm-hmm. is going to be what the value is of the S&P. And I guess the way I'm kind of envisioning this is that, you know, on, on average, you know, the S&P is at, you know, whatever relative to, to these certain levels, right? Yeah. And, and so I've, I've, I've punched this into to, to chat GPT to give me, you know, to give me the output. But one of the things you had mentioned is, and I want this to be real time. I don't necessarily want this to be a prediction, uh, some sort of future prediction, right? I, oh yeah, right. I, I just need the prediction today, right? Like, mm. um, hey, I, I would predict given this that today the price should be forty four hundred, right? But then the price is yeah. forty two hundred right now, right? Um, but you had uh-huh. mentioned that there should be some like what would you call it confidence intervals? Is is that what you'd call it? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, that's right. Yep. So it would just be confidence intervals, but what what is that? Compu- yep. What would that actually be computing? Um, it, like, what would those boundaries? What would those boundaries actually be? That 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 it, would, would it be saying that? Like, like let's say the confidence intervals are ninety five and five percent. Would it be saying that mm-hmm. ninety five and five percent of the time, mm-hmm. within that range, uh, that the price will be within this prediction? Uh not no no it's not the way it's models okay. work it was it's predicting the your model uncertainty so it's saying saying your model is saying that the price given the assumptions of your model will be in this range for for sure the key is given the assumptions of your model yeah so it's, yeah it's, it's predicting yeah. The, the spread given all the data inputs given your model assumptions uh what the spread will be so so when people naively use a model you know, plug in some numbers, get a single, get a number out. Mm-hmm. You know, those are just fools. <laughs> so every model has uncertainty. Everyone. So like what? Every 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 single number you put in is is an uncertain number. And so, um, if you don't calculate confidence intervals correctly, uh, you're just not using a model correctly at all. When you do uh, compute confidence intervals, you're just displaying the uncertainty of your model. And if your model is good, that will reflect very accurately, you know, the uncertainty in the S&P price tomorrow or today. You yeah. say, like today, re- like today time? So you're putting data up until, what, yesterday? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's something that you should be able to do pretty well. So I, yeah. okay, Let, let's, say, let's say I create this model, right? And it spits out three values. The, the mean... The ninety-five percent and the five percent, right? So let's just say the mean is four thousand. The bottom boundary is thirty-nine. Yeah, you need yeah. two numbers: the mean and the um, some variance. But yeah, I guess the way that I I was thinking it is that you'd have the mean, you'd have the lower boundary. So let's just say the mean is four thousand, right? The S and P is at four thousand. 
the bottom boundary would be at 3,900 and the upper boundary yeah, yeah. would be at 4,100, right? Oh, sure. Okay. But let's say, so that's its prediction, right? Right. But let's say in real time, price is at, so the bottom bound was 30, 3,900 and that's the, the, the 5%, right? Let's say yeah. the price is actually not at 3,900, but let's say in real time, it just so happens the S&P is at 3,850. So it's below the bottom yeah. bound, right? Yeah. What, yeah. Is that, what is that telling me? Beyond the, the, the model's wrong. Like, like what, what am I learning? 3,850 is close enough that it's not an outlier. It's not like a black swan. And so it's just telling you that um, a freak, you know, uh, a, a tail event sort of occurred. Nothing wrong. No, you yeah, panic if you, you wouldn't panic at that stage unless that happened day after day after day. Um, statistically, if it's an outlier, though, what is what is that? Uh, would it would it be right to say then that ninety percent of the time the price, if that model works, the price should be within the two bounds, the upper and the lower yeah. boundary? Is is, yeah. is, that, is that a way? Okay, 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 yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, so you're gonna you need to you need to run the model for a few months to to uh get it get a handle on, the, on see that. okay you could you could go seven days with it coming consistently below your 95 percent yeah pounds. yeah <laughs> and then like just give up and say oh no but then you know the next hundred days it, it might it might have been really good and you just trashed it because you didn't st stick with it <laughs> so what, could, what I could happen let's start rolling a dice you could roll a series of you know ones six in a row yeah. You go hang yeah. on, this dice yeah. ain't fair. Yeah. But if you do if you do a few hundred or thousand, then you'll see it, it might it might still be a fair dice. Um you can always get unlucky. It's like there's always someone who's that unlucky. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. You, you would be the rare event. So I would say that the chance uh for me that you are gonna be that unlucky is very low. I but I, the chance that I can find someone in the world who's going to have a model that they're going to trash. It's actually a really good model because they, they don't understand uncertainty. Chance I can find someone like that somewhere <laughs> in the world is very high. Very high, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think why an approach like that would be helpful as a trader, for those of you who, who are kind of thinking this from a trader standpoint, yeah. right, is if, yeah. if you could create a, a fair value based on kind of the core MMT flows, right, and you could right. say that 95% of the time or 90% of the time that price should be within some boundary, Right, mm -hmm. and if that's the way to go, and if yeah. price is relatively low in that boundary, then you know, okay, that should be a buy signal, right? If it's relatively high, that right. could be a sell signal, right? So, something like yeah. that, I, I, right? We're, you're, not, you're not, you're not, you're yeah. not trying to predict some future price. That, that's definitely a model that that I've, you know, that's what my base model is. It works well, but what what I what I would want to know in real time is what should the price be right now, given the data, as opposed to what will the mm. price be in the future? Um, that, that could be a, an additional component. Uh, maybe I don't even need a deep yeah. learning model to do this, but mm. I, I, I guess it does seem like something like an LSTM that kind of has sensitivity to, uh, yeah. has sensitivity to, uh, to kind of the nonlinearities yeah. might, might be able to, to, to glean some insight yeah. that, that a more simple model I uh, wouldn't be think able so. to. Okay. All right. I think I'm on the right track. The, LSD, the LSDNs are think, something that I would use. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because they're a, sh a shortcut for avoiding a whole lot of uh, complicated analytical mathematics in finance that I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> just try a neural network yeah. at it. But I know it's just doing this, it's solving a similar problem. And so, yeah, that's, that's the way I'd do it. You know, it's a sort of a, like, a, you know, throw the data at it sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but oh yeah, they reminded me of one other thing. Uh, turns out right. So yeah, because because I because I've been uh putting aside a little bit of the MMT work for a while. I was, I was doing some students physics tutoring and that, but I did check out one of the. I, I came across an interesting uh, channel on one of the um. Oh, you know, democratizing AI stuff. Yeah, that's right. So, so it was because I was, uh, I, I got onto the little bit of news that the Google uh, memo had leaked, and you know they were, they were pulling the hair out that the Chat GPT and Open Open AI and Google are not going to be able to win the AI arms race now. They realize because the open source community 
can develop far faster and oh uh, yeah 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 and it's uh, it's not proprietary code you know works as long as it's proprietary <laughs> once once the basic and out framework and methodology and, and uh, understanding gets into the free software community you sort of lost um unless you've got um you know buyer lock-in and so forth which is what apple and microsoft did with a lot of their you know office products like right? people just don't want to move away from yeah to yeah. the new linux because you know uh, they prefer the what they're comfortable with but with ai like you know hackers don't care about any of that shit yeah right? yeah yeah but if you lose use control of a new secret algorithm or secret source it, it, it's too late if the hackers get a hold of it because they have no loyalty to uh proprietary software at all so um the interesting thing was the guy who did it's i think it's called uh chat uh no gpt for all i think G, gpt for all so he's a nice he sounds like a really good free software guy or at least open source I won't hold that against them. And um, it's interesting. He, they realized what is the secret source. Um, the guy's pretty smart. He understands that all the neural networks are baby mathematics. Yeah, it's trivial mathematics. He realized his company made this huge, uh, got a huge amount of investment, I think, because they realized clean data, the quality of the input data to them uh, was critical paramount yeah. critical so what yeah. so they were able to do some really good work with low um low compute power okay not even on a gpu running on a cpu oh, wow. low end computer wow yeah and and they cleaned up the data they put a lot of effort into cleaning yep. up the data yep. and the cool thing is is of course you can guess what's going to happen right you use the neural network to help you clean up the data oh yeah 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 <laughs> God, awesome. speaking of which, time, man. I, I, I was going to tell you, I, you know, I, I don't know if you're using um, Copilot at all, or if if you know Python, and like can use uh, pandas and and Python for uh, pivot tables and stuff. But I'll tell you what, man. I mean, if you're not and you're you're working with a lot of pivot tables in Excel with uh, CSV files and stuff, dude, g give me a give me a give me a um, shoot me a message on Twitter, and uh, I can run you through a little little tutorial. It is it is so easy now to to deal with. Uh, large CSV files yeah. in uh, with uh, with Copilot. Um, Good man, you've done really well with a guy with a pretty severe cold, nasal problem. Yeah, man. yeah. I'm impressed, man. Do you want to take a break though? Or um, actually, I I don't know if you guys saw us. Uh, she was off camera, but my wife just refilled my water for me, so I'm I'm still good to go. Uh, we we yeah, can actually yeah. we probably probably should start wrapping up here soon. Anyway, we should probably. I think we're probably dropping views. I don't know. We we are. How's the views? We we've we've hit that point where uh, yeah we are starting to drop viewership uh, and uh, chat starting yeah, to dry yeah. up but uh, yeah. I I think uh, I've, I think I've covered most of what I want to tonight I don't know if you had any other, yeah. uh, any other things to to hit on I don't know um, I maybe I could mention it again next week so I'll keep some of my notes okay yeah but just anyone anyone is just uh, uh, still still hanging in there with us we mentioned uh, Warren's talk before i actually went back and listened again to the bob murphy debate ah the classic yeah the classic and uh it's because i knew there was something in there that i wanted to pull out and just just give a little mention on the live stream for you uh you know coming back getting back on from your disney trip getting back on onto this i'm gonna, I'm gonna switch over to your tablet is, real quick so everyone can see oh that's yeah right. you that's can right. yeah, yeah. Your tablet, I suppose. Yeah. yeah yeah so i've got the link there but i'm, I'm not sure you're gonna be able to uh put it in the chat Everyone knows the Bob Murphy link. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no need to copy it in the chat. Anyway, there's just a moment in there. Okay, so the time is 3831 seconds in, 3831 seconds in. And it's just a cool thing because I, I was thinking, you know, so many little things that that I, uh, I think I had originated. But then I listened to them and I'm, oh, damn, I think Warren already said that. <laughs> So this this one is just a little uh, little goodie. You'll you'll remember Douglas and I talking about how um, you know Austrian school extreme libertarians, right? When they get together as a community and figure out how they're going to enforce their contracts and so forth, that is government. 
you know yeah so yeah they say they don't want government but we, however whatever oh, system is, yeah. is the organized yeah. community it is yeah. government and so there's that moment in the bob murphy debate where warren says that there's so many other places where he just you know freezes bob murphy does a sort of little mini human blue screen of death kind of thing <laughs> just pretty hilarious stuff anyway just wanted to mention that um you you the, the not, not the second one down but the one beneath that um you put uh listen to warren's response regarding the question oh yeah can you maybe that's too it, important that's too important we okay. should do that again next uh, week but i'll mention it for now anyone who's still listening in so go again to the murphy debate those are all the same you know yeah. okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So at 49 seconds, I think, 06, there's this dude with a, um, you know, the Jewish uh, thing. Yeah. I think you, you yep. recognize it. You don't, I don't have to mention the guy. Yeah. And he, he asked a really interesting question. It's like one of the one of the only really good questions. And you listen to it and you might be thinking that Warren doesn't answer the question correctly. Okay. I mean, it doesn't address the question. He, answer, he does answer yeah. it correctly. Yeah. But you're interested because it's very, very interesting. So this guy, he sounds like he's an Austrian schooler or yep. maybe, I yep. don't know. He talks about it, how he used to be teaching teaching, and then he went into the financial sector. Yep. And there's, a, there's a lot of those guys in that, in that uh, lecture room. But this guy's interesting because he, um, he gets out the question that, uh, you know, so MIT is saying, it, you know, you can just put a few extra zeros on the end of the currency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, and then you're distorting things you're distorting the economy you're distorting past contracts okay so the guy doesn't really understand what mmt is saying it's yeah like MMT yeah is never never saying that oh we can just add zeros to the yeah to the dollar yep but uh, so that's the first mistake he makes and if you did and you wanted to um you know keep past uh contracts well you just had you'd have to right as a matter of um uh, i guess justice or whatever you want to call it um you'd have to also allow them to stick zeros on the end of their contracts so you do a pure regauge of the currency yeah um if you if that's what's you, what you're going to do for other reasons it's not it's not to distort past contracts but to just regauge and uh essentially that's sort of what you do when you allow inflation to go right but as long as people as long as you don't have corruption massive corruption you can have a fairly mild um, inflation rate, as high as you like. You know, it could even be twenty percent. It's not, and it's stability that matters there. As long as people know the inflation rate is is going to roughly be around twenty percent, um, because you're deliberately running the economy, the economy monetarily hot. Yeah. Like in a digital currency that we've talked about, then you're not distorting anything because everyone knows. Everyone has the information. They can uh, negotiate their contracts and, um, you know, there's not a problem. It's a problem if you make a massive policy adjustment shifts very suddenly. But anyway, it's still a good question because Warren's response is so interesting. So, you know, if you're interested in this sort of, in these sort of little technical details. About yeah. MIT, go okay. Check it, so go so check I, it out. I did listen to it. My thought was, yeah, he never actually directly responded to the question. That was, he that did was, though. Yeah. 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 yeah he yeah, responded I, it in the best way yeah, possible, but no one I, in the room understood, understood it. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Now. I don't think okay. anyone really understood because what he did is he pulls out his card again and says, if, if I, um, you know, if I'm tech, if I've got a guy at the door, I, f I forget how he did it again, but yeah, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah. if I'm forcing you to need my currency and I don't give it to you, the system's in default. Yep. So MMT, it's not about printing money, printing money, adding zeros, inflation, inflation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. about fully employing all the resources. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you don't issue enough currency to cover the need to pay taxes and the savings and size, you're putting the system in default. Yep. So, so um, you have to inject the currency, and and and, and you're not going to get any inflation if you're employing already unemployed resources that have zero bid from the private sector. So, he answered that question in in, in just so much a sort of like a, you know, what you, what do you want to call it? <laughs> it's not it's not galaxy brained, but it just in yeah. a very yeah in a very um uh. uh 
I've, I, I don't hear. I, I've run uh, out. Of, I don't, he he I, I knew. I've run out of. He he knew the he, he knew the answer that kid actually needed, not the answer that kid actually yeah. wanted. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. And, he, and that, yeah, he just he just went above everyone's head. Yeah, yeah. It, and and, then, and and Warren's yeah. head. He doesn't. He doesn't. Well, I don't think Warren always appreciates his his listeners' uh, capacity. <laughs> yeah. Fill in all the. Yep. Yeah. 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 But but t- yeah. ten years later, that answer finally hit him. Hopefully. That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Good yeah that's good that's good um so, I, I think i'm dry I yeah go eat yeah, some lunch and yeah, stuff, yeah yeah so yeah i think i think we had another very successful uh stream I'm, I'm glad to be back i feel uh reinvigorated to uh get back at a few ideas and um yeah just Great, uh man. just continue to uh forge forward so for everyone who showed up tonight uh, yeah, for uh, my triumphant return, uh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, I am seeing yeah, a few questions cool come in. Uh, H- Hamel, any thoughts on First Republic Bank? Yeah, again, I, I, I think this is we're gonna um, we're gonna have banks blow up. I mean, it's just gonna be part of it. But uh, um, I, I still think this is regaging. Could, could we be in a situation where things get brittle enough? Possibly, but. Um, yeah, I, I think it just continues to be regaging, and I'm sure we'll have a few more of these banks pop, and, mm-hmm. and the, the the new rate regime yeah. just means new winners and new losers. Yeah, the big um, banks will soak it all up, FDIC insurance. Yeah, so far, too, that has also been, uh, that has also been the, the case. Yeah, the smaller banks. Yeah, I, I mean, apparently it turns out a high interest rate policy just means... We're going to have nationalized banking eventually, right? I mean, if, I don't know. <laughs> I mean if, first it means concentration of wealth. Uh, yeah. Secondly, uh, it yeah, means um, yeah, slowly but surely. When the, when the, ra- well, when the rates go down, the bondholders win big, and uh, yeah, all that sort of crazy stuff. We'll have we'll have four banks left in in America. Four when banks. This is all, yeah. When this is all said and done, it's essentially be public banking. Zero percent <laughs> unemployment, but four banks. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, six banks in Canada. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Sorry, Eugene, that you're just showing up, man. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've. I think we've. We we need to conclude this. Um, oh, thanks, Josh. Yeah, geothermal is really good. Uh, if you could, if you got geothermal, all right, that's why Iceland is going to be sort of okay energy wise. Um, yeah. Hey, thanks everyone for joining again tonight and, um, always a great discussion. Always a great time here. So, uh, thank you. I don't know, Bijou, if you have uh, an outro for us this week, but, uh, uh, no, just, just quickly on the, on the geothermal that Josh raised you, okay. um, there's some New Zealand scientists who have, um, figured out a way to descale the pipes. The big problem with geothermal is scaling uh, build build up of crud basically to put okay. this technique <laughs> okay. on the yeah. pipes yeah and, and we've got we've got these foams that, that actually get rid of that so that's a really good uh really good thing for the environment anyway clean energy i don't i i, I did have something for an outro but i thought um i would show you uh, one of the chat gpt attempts oh no <laughs> okay let me let me get to yeah your, uh... yeah it's funny so do, do I need to pull was, up your tablet or your screen? Uh no, nah, don't worry. Neither. No, okay, okay. I didn't I didn't type it in my Oh you didn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But I just kept a record of it. I'm I, I, I edited it a little bit. No, I didn't edit it too much. Oh, I guess so. So I, I wanted a Batman outro in the style of Monty Python and the debt ceiling problems. <laughs> I, the, prompt, the prompt was a little bit more detailed than that. But like I said, it was interesting because it the humor is an interesting style of humor. Uh, you know, how, how the, the corpus of data that chat GPT yeah, has, yeah. how it interprets yeah. like Monty Python style. Okay. So, forth. so I, I had to prompt it quite a bit to get anything decent out of it, but here it is. Right. The interesting, the cool thing is, is that it gave me the, um, you know, script, um, you know, camera positions and things. Oh, that's wild. As if it was a yeah, yeah, as if it was a movie script. I didn't ask for a movie script, I just asked for a script. So, so it starts off like this, right? Last time on fiscal follies, camera pans over to the Capitol building with comic book style captions. <laughs> Narrator. Yeah. Our comical Congress clashed over the confounding debt ceiling, a crisis capable of putting the nation's piggy bank in peril. 
it's, I'll, I'll forget all the camera camera zoom yeah, and stuff, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's quite it's quite amusing that it does it amidst so i'll just do the narrator this is, this is our outro for today amidst the uproar some representative seems puzzled that public debt equates to net private savings oh the irony eventually they agreed to temporarily raise the debt ceiling saving the day <laughs> for now but beware viewers the debt ceiling drama will surely return camera zooms out blah, blah, blah. will our laughable lawmakers learn their lesson and find a lasting solution visual of confused politician with a light bulb above his head flickers on and off stay tuned to see what the wacky <laughs> antics await the next episode of fiscal follies that's awesome man uh, b- yeah. uh, bijou uh, i, I- I know you're not having an existential crisis, but I'm having an existential crisis for you. I, uh, ChatGPT has replaced your outros, man. It's too good. It's too good. <laughs> nowhere near as good as mine. I want to vote on it. I want to vote. It's nowhere near as good. It did, uh, it, it did do another one with Knights of Our Round Budget Table and the Frightful Dragon of the Debt Singling, a beast so menacing it could topple the nation's gilded chariot of prosperity. I thought that, I thought that one was pretty good, too. Join us next week. Stay vigilant and join us for the next chapter of Monty Fiscal's Great Debt Ceiling Quest. <laughs> Jaunty medieval music ends with a flourish. That's good See stuff. See you guys. Yeah, good yeah. Stuff. Good stuff. Good next stuff. MMT, uh, same MMT time, same MMT so channel. Yes, we will be back next week, everybody. Take care. Bye. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.